Figaro, Figaro, Figaro. <laughs> Unique New York. Unique New York. Unique New York. All right, John Gallette, thank you for joining us here at uh, Flannel Mouth for our very first podcast. We're excited to have you. We know this is a little nerve wracking for you to do, so we appreciate you doing it. No, you didn't sleep much last night, and um, <laughs> no, no. you kind of you kind of indicated this may be your last interview on this. So yes, I believe so. So we're we're very fortunate, very honored, very humbled. Um, John and I have built a relationship over the last few years, Facebook friends, and uh, you got to see a lot of my life and my children, and got to see you and Susan, your beautiful wife. We had dinner last night. Got to see that see that relationship of all. So very exciting. Um, this is a very intriguing uh, time in, in our country, in the world, with UFOs and the government and everything that's coming out. And with what happened to you and what's ha happening now, it's, 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 it's such a perfect time to have this interview and have this conversation. And so we're really excited that you're here and that we're doing this. Um, I want to just give a sh quick shout out to our sponsor, Patriots Insurance, real quick before we get started. Um, if you're in the, in the market for life insurance, um, Patriots insurance works for you. They don't work for the insurance carrier and over 50% of Americans don't have any type of life insurance. And those who have life insurance say that they're underinsured. So if you're looking for a good life insurance, they represent over 50 different companies in the market. And, um, they say that life insurance is really love insurance. Isn't that sweet? It's really love insurance at the end of the day. So they make sure when you're talking to them, you ask them about living benefits because there's two different types of life insurance. There's the old type that only pays you if you die. The new type pays you if you live. So text life insurance to 714-688-6994. So thank you, Patreos, for sponsoring uh, this episode. So with that, this is a true story. Um, it's a the inspiration behind the blockbuster movie fire in the sky and on november 5th i believe it was 1975 19 almost 50 years ago 50 oh, years ago next year yeah. uh, the most incredible horrifying and harrowing thing happened the most significant and verifiable credible ufo alien encounters in history occurred and you were right at the forefront of that you were right in the middle of that um, and on the evidence of the polygraphs alone, which we'll get into all this, but on the evidence of the polygraphs alone, this is the most well corroborated UFO incidents in history and, and a uh, lot of uh, speculation, but there's si seven eyewitnesses and this is really powerful. And this is really, really what it gets down to. There's seven eyewitnesses and you're one of those key eyewitnesses. You guys are a bunch of tough blue collar guys. And everybody, you need to know, as I kind of lay this out, and John will tell us what happened, and we'll ask some questions, but you guys were ostracized from your community, from your families. Yeah. Yeah. You guys were called liars uh, by your friends, your community. I know Steve's mom still doesn't believe him that it happened, from what I saw. You guys were accused of murder. You, yeah. were, you were shamed. You guys were verbally harassed. People were yelling at you as, as, as Travis was missing in those five days. And th there's division and turmoil uh, within, I think, the group, too, a little bit today, but more so all the family and everything that, well, that's happened with you guys. Go ahead. Now, that's, uh, you know, any, basically any problems we have with each other ain't got anything at all to do with that UFO. Mike Rogers used to be my brother-in-law. Well, he, he said something about my sister once. Gotcha. That's my problem with Mike Rogers. Yeah. So it doesn't have anything to do with the incident. Mm -hmm. Your 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 guys' disagreements doesn't have anything to do with the incident. No, no. I mean, other other things. You know, no, nothing. You know, I don't have any. They were all really good, hardworking people. Yeah. You know, and they're good, honest. You know, and uh, and I was fortunate to be with a group like that when this did happen. You know, and I said, all you had to do is just tell the truth. You know. We've, you know, people say, well, your story hasn't, well, of course it hasn't changed. All you do is just tell the truth, you know. Yeah. How do you, how do you change the truth? You That's know? powerful. I mean, to tell, to tell the same story unanimously, seven guys over 50 years, 
And I know the impact this had on you. I'm going to quote you real quick. This is one of the quotes that, that you said, and I think it's powerful. It said, this has had a profound effect on my life. I kind of took off and went kind of wild for a while. I didn't like being called a liar. I didn't want people to know about it. Um, since I, I, I left the area for years, I never talked about it. It was the most horrifying event of my life. It was. It was. Um, I, I've been through, that was just, I've been through a thousand adventures, man. You know, they're just wild things, you know. You know, but I've never been so scared. The fact is, you know, you're looking at this, and there's absolutely nothing you can do. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're, you're. You can't defend yourself. You can't, you know. You ain't sure as hell you went out running or something, you know. Totally. You know, you can't. There's nothing you can do. You're totally. Just there. You know, I mean, like in a combat situation or a, a bad accident where you can help people, you know, you can do this. You, you got a chance, you know. But looking at that, you just knew you didn't stand a chance in the world, you know. You know? Right. Whatever they want is the way it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I it's just so fascinating to me that you've got seven guys who, who've told the same story. You guys have passed polygraphs, some people multiple times on these polygraphs. That's huge in and of itself. But I love the contrast because as, as I was looking into this, uh, during around similar time, you had Nixon and the Watergate scandal. And you had Nixon's seven, or the Watergate seven, as they call it. And there, here's these elite, you know, uh, college educated politicians and they couldn't keep a lie straight for two weeks. And then you've got you guys, which are seven blue collar loggers who um, have told the same story for over 50 years, passed multiple polygraphs. Um, and you guys were stalked by the government uh, after, right after the event, people were following you guys, uh, which, which is, which is amazing. And so you've got, you got the white eyewitness here. I've done a lot of, information on this myself i've told you several times you know i first heard about this story when the movie came out the blockbuster fire in the sky if you guys haven't seen that you got to see the movie fire in the sky it is absolutely a phenomenal movie great movie uh, it scared the heck out of me not really i i yeah nine years old my dad took me to see the movie terrified me so I've never seen it. <laughs> you've never seen the movie no. you serious wow <laughs> so i made my kids watch it because i figured they need to go through the same experience so i'd terrorize them so they watched the movie, and then I looked you guys up, found you online about three years ago, and you and I started to develop a relationship. Brian over here knows really nothing about it. He, he virtually knows nothing about the So he's coming in with a fresh perspective, outsider's perspective on this whole thing. Maybe maybe you want to go in depth and, like, describe the event. You know, like, I mean, I don't know, like, what happened. So, like, maybe explain, like, seeing a light and exactly what happened in that situation. Okay, uh, so we can get a, a firm understanding of what exactly you saw, you know, and uh, so we can get the real experience and understand it as much as you can. The, uh, okay, the, um, uh, you know, we worked up until just about dark, you know, and then Steve's job was to load the, all the equipment back up, you know, and Steve Pierce. And uh, so we load, load it all back up, and then we, it's a real bad road, you know, and it's got these, they, they're, call them bars, you know, actually they are a bar, but it, uh, what it is, it's uh, prevent erosion from washing the road out. They just, it's a big hump that goes across the road, so it's like a speed bump, you know, but I'm there in the middle of nowhere. But uh, anyway, so it was, it was uh, it was a pretty rough road coming out of there. And we're driving along and started noticing the light through the trees, you know, way, you know a ways off. And uh, What color light was yeah, it? It was kind of a yellowish, you know, uh, you know, like a lampshade almost, you know, like. You know, like you see the old lampshades, kind of yellowish color. Yeah, not not yeah. bright white, but yellow. Yeah, kind of. You know, it wasn't just white, but it. And uh, anyway, you see that light, and thought it might be the moon. Then I looked over to the left. I see the moon over there. This thing's over on the right. And then uh, 
So, you know. Just uh, piercing, like bright, nope. bright as can be, or just kind of no, dull? No, it, it wasn't real bright. Okay. It was, uh, oh, man, you know. But noticeable. You you noticed yeah, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. you definitely see it. I mean, it was dark. There's no other light yeah, out yeah. there, you know, and, and uh, it's pitch black without that light. Did it startle you guys initially when you saw the light, wondering what was out there, knowing you guys were well, alone? Yeah, we were, uh, you know, we were all, you know, somebody said, well, it's like a plane crash. Well, I'd mm. spent, just spent years around aircraft and that, and I, I knew it wasn't a plane crash. And, uh, and, uh, so then you guys headed towards it? Huh? Then you headed towards it? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, we had to go past where it was to get out. Okay, there was only okay. one road. Oh, all right, I see. Yeah. Well, got it. I guess that road went some other way, but that's a, uh, you know, but uh, I don't know where it went the other way. We never got that far. Do you, <laughs> you know, we just uh, do you, that's where the mothership was. Do you remember <laughs> the Do you remember the conversation that you guys were having in the truck while you saw the light as you're coming up to it? What well, you guys were saying to each other? Like, can you recall it all? Like, is that a broken down plane? Is that like a semi truck or something? You know, like what is that? Yeah, you know, we just you know we were discussing was it a fire? You know, but then couldn't be a fire because there wasn't no smoke. And like I said, it was uh, when they do their when they do their uh, what do they call it prescribed burns. Yeah. When they burn those right. piles, that, you know, we had piled up. You know, like the next year they'll come and burn them out. You know, and uh, get the fuel out of there for fires and stuff. But uh, see, it. Uh, I don't know. How far away are you guys when you first noticed the light? When first saw it? Yeah. Oh, man, we're like a quarter mile away at least. Gotcha. You know? Okay. And, and, uh, but, as, uh, you know, we'd come up around this bend, and there was a, when they logged up there, they would take a, they, they call it slash pilot. Mm-hmm. It's like trash logs and stuff, and they put them in a pile, and they'd burn those too. You know, we're supposed to, but uh, anyway, that's there was a clearing there, and it was one of those slash piles right out in the middle of the clearing, and this thing was just sitting there, kind of over the edge of the slash pile. You know, like what'd you see? What it? What was it? <laughs> you know, it was the most beautiful and the most terrifying thing I ever saw in my life. But mm. it was. It was perfect, absolutely perfect, you know, and it had a, you could, have, you could see framework in it, you know, I mean, through the light, it glowed that yellowish color, but you could see the framework of the craft, and, you know, uh, like in panels almost. So does it look like, like round or like square, or like? It was, um, it was pretty much round, uh, no. To me, it looked like it had, you know, like on the stop sign or something, had those corner bars. Oh, yeah, those lights around the stop sign. Yeah, well, no, I mean... No, like, like the shape of it? The shape yeah. of it had, okay. the, had the corners. Right. Okay. You know, but it, um, but it wasn't square on the end. It was kind of more elongated and, you know, uh, pointed like an octagon at the end. Kind of and then it, you know, uh, had a little... Had a, like a dome on the top of it, you know. I couldn't, uh, I could see maybe three quarters of the craft mm-hmm. you know, from where I was sitting yeah. in the vehicle. You know, because I was in the back seat and I was having to lean down and look yeah. through the, of course, out in Dallas, he was on the floorboard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where he thought he was going <laughs> when he was down. You know. How big was it? How big? It was, um, Oh man, it was probably like I'd say, man, like fifteen feet by twenty feet, you know. And uh, um, how far off the ground was it? Oh, it was uh, again, man, about fifteen twenty feet off the ground. Well, so it's not landed. 
Huh? This is something that's not landed. It's no, hovering. it's not landed. Okay. Not, not making it, a noise. Not is doing it, anything. Is not making any noise. Is it completely still? Is it is it rotating? Yeah. Well, is it moving? When we got there, it was completely still. And no noise. No. So no it wasn't noise. spinning or anything like that. No no yeah. rotation, no vibration. Uh -uh, not when we first got there. No. So so you guys didn't hear anything. All you all you saw was this this object, this this light, and 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 just you you guys talking. Yeah, well, you know, Micah kind of pulled into that clearing a little bit, you know, where the headlights were shining that way. And then, uh, man, before he even stopped, you know, uh, Travis had that door open, was getting out. I don't never know why, you know. And uh, Well, we understand so Travis, Travis was a little bit of a crazy man. I, I heard, I heard uh, he jumped out of a car one time and chased a bear. Into yeah, the woods. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> those black bears up there, man. You know, my granddaughter chased one off. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, they're really they're pretty. All you gotta do is yeah, confront them. Okay, okay. You know. So that story got a little embellished, then, huh? <laughs> it was, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So Travis opens the door, jumps out. Yeah, man, he was out, man, before it he even didn't, stopped. He didn't put the car in park or nothing? He just jumped out of the car? Before the truck had even come to a complete oh stop. Where was Travis he, sitting? He was sitting on the passenger side. Okay, of the okay. gotcha. And where were you sitting? I was sitting... Um, Behind okay, him or back? There was four of us in that back mm -hmm. seat. And uh, so Alan Dallas was sitting by the window. I was sitting next to Alan mm -hmm. Dallas there, you know, in the back seat. And Dallas is down in the floorboard oh, yeah. hiding, huh? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, that's that, pretty good. That guy, you know, that guy had a chest about that big around. Gotcha. But man, he would he would fight anybody. Wow. Oh man, he was you know Except for aliens. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, when you <laughs> Yeah, well, we'd go out, you know. I always just figured, you know, we're either going to get laid or we're going to get in a fight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not much else to do in Snowflake. So Tra Travis is getting out of the car, and is it on, on the passenger side or the driver's side? Like the... He was on the passenger side. So he's out on the passenger side, and he it's right there where he is. Well, no. Uh, no, he had to... Uh... How far away is oh, the, was... the spaceship? Oh, it was probably 30 feet away. He, okay, so not too far. Yeah, he got out and I had to, he was, uh, had his hands in his pockets, he had a, a, a Levi jacket on, you know, and uh, had his hands in his pockets, he was kind of bent over, and he's moving up, to, you know, looking at it, and and, uh, and we're all screaming, yelling for him to come back, you know, and uh, yeah, I mean, he got all the way up there, then he was kind of almost under, you know, almost under that thing. And he's looking up at it, and then they, uh, I heard this noise, like a little rumble. And, uh, and then there was, to me, man, I kind of heard a, like a beep, you know, like equipment backing up or no smoking on an airplane or something, you know, it was mm -hmm. kind of a warning, you know, but. I don't think anybody else heard it, you know, but uh, to me it seemed like that, you know, and uh, I thought, oh, shit, and I turned my head, and I looked at the forest, and then I was turning back to look, you know, look back where Travis was, and, and everything just lit up a bluish green, and I could see him in the, that beam of light, that beam of light hitting him, and him flying in the air, you know, Oh man, he flew back about ten feet. You know, he flew backwards. Yeah, and then he just kind of when he hit the ground, man, it was like he didn't even have any bones. He just crumbled up. You know, just wadded up right there. You know? Wow. And, uh, that Mike took off. <laughs> you know? Did he take off right away? Yeah. Just, just, just floored it, huh? Yeah. Uh, he. Uh, you know, I mean. I don't know. I was scared to death too. Yeah, I was glad, yeah, to, of get, course, I was yeah, glad sure. to get getting out. I was terrified. Right. You know, but that was his best friend. You know. Yeah. But, you know, he uh, 
felt always felt terrible about that we had taken off. Yeah, yeah but we didn't have a you know I'm, you couldn't even open that door. Where I was at, right? You had to go. You know, you only get out the other side. You yeah, know, you couldn't even open the door. Nobody got out. Right, you know, and or. Or ran to him, you know, to help him. He it, stood off and left him. You know. It's interesting to see Mike's reaction, even to this day. He still gets worked up about it. He still gets oh, tearful God. about Shows. about taking off and leaving. They were the best of friends, and I don't know what happened. I think it was uh, um, trouble over money over this UFO sure. stuff. You know, well, they were they were. Oh, well, it's a you know, he listened to them to getting in a conversation, you know. I'd argue about everything. Travis and Mike, very intelligent men. Right. And they just full of knowledge, you know. And they would argue about stuff, you know. Uh, I enjoyed it, you know. But right, sure. It, you know, like the rest, rest of me kind of, sometimes it would irritate them, like Alan. Right. You know, like they were arguing about drinking water out of a plastic jug would cause cancer or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, things like that, you know. And, uh, so you guys Which is which is true. <laughs> we know <yeah>. now. <laughs> Fifty years later. So you guys see see the bluish greenish light. Mm. Travis gets blown back a little bit, about ten feet. Yeah. Looks like noodles like spaghetti on the ground, right? Yeah, he was laying it was on the ground when and, Mike took and, off. And he then did. Mike just takes off and like, what are you guys saying in the car? Like, what's the conversation? Can you? Oh um, well, we're actually it was it was everybody was arguing both ways. Yeah, we yeah. Gotta yeah. go back and get him. No, okay. we gotta go. And like I said, there were hunters out there, so there's guys out there with rifles. What time? What time is this at night? Uh, uh, oh, this was getting dark. You know, it's like it six was dark by then. Six, uh, seven, eight. Yeah, we worked right up until okay. almost dark. All right. And uh, so there's hunters out there. Hmm. You said there's hunters out there? Yeah, there, you could see them. We drove down a Turkey Springs Road toward the Rim Road. Uh, you could see, uh, every once in a while, see a vehicle on the Rim Road. Mm-hmm. Rim Road was kind of the main road for that area back there in the woods. Mm-hmm. But a lot, of, you know, there was a lot of hunters that went up and down that road trying to get to spots out there. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so we thought, you know, well, how would we get somebody with guns? Yeah. Go back. You know, sure. And, uh, yeah. But get a posse together. Yeah, it's probably better that we didn't. I don't right. know. You know but, but, you know, but then uh, we drove, I don't know, maybe a quarter mile, half mile. And then uh, there was a, I think it was, it was just kind of like a wide spot. Mike pulled off in there and we started arguing about going back or going to get help. And, uh, you guys actually stopped and got out of the car, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, but... Could you see the light from where you were? No. No. Uh, okay. But we did see it, and what we thought was it saw a flash across the sky, of that of a light flash across the sky. You know, and then uh, that's when uh, me and uh, Kenny Peterson talked Mike into going back. You know, and uh, he, uh, <laughs> yeah, he said, like, you had a choice. You could, that, that never happened because you didn't have a choice. Right. Oh, for sure. Stay out there You're not going to stay out there. Have, no way. And pitch black woods, you know. Right. Yeah, waiting for somebody else to come along and pick you up. No, man, you're going <laughs> to, you're going to stay with the group and. You know, so we so uh, did you guys go back pretty quick, like the same speed you left, or are you going back kind of slow? Yeah, I think <laughs> drove back pretty slow. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, a couple of reasons, you know, we were uh, wanting to make sure we got to the right spot. Right. You know, because we took off in a panic and all that. But also, you know, somebody could be walking along that road. Sure. And those trees and that, you wouldn't see them if you're mm-hmm. hurrying along. If you're taking your time, your light's... You know, and that will light it up around there. You've got a better chance to see them. What's the conversation as you guys are going back? I mean, I mean, you guys are surely mind blown at this point. Well, you know, I mean, we're basically we're trying to 
decide what it was, you know, what we had seen. And, uh, is, every, is everybody unanimous this was a UFO at this point? Or oh, you, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> there's, there's no conjecture. Yeah. It could have been something else or... You know, I think, um, I don't know, you know, I'm, I couldn't imagine anybody thinking anything else. Yeah. Know? I mean, it was, it was right there in front of you. you know? And you, you guys think Travis is dead at this point? Hmm? You think he's dead? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Every, oh, sure. He's somebody dead. thought he was uh, obliterated, right? That he had evaporated? Did somebody say uh, that? Uh, you know, sci-fi movies and stuff sure. you know, they probably figured you know but you know i i don't i don't remember thinking that i just figured he was dead you saw his body actually hit the ground you saw him yeah. on on the ground out unconscious yep. now the light that hit him how big was that light was it was it a small was it like a laser oh, beam like, man, it was, uh, was it all encompassing did it, did it, it cover his a, whole body it was a lot bigger and around than he was okay you know um and did, did it pick him up and hold him or did it just pick him up and throw him or did it no, hit him just or? like it when you hit him uh you ever been get electrical shock sure <laughs> you know how your body will <laughs> yeah. not me but yeah. 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 that's what I, it looked I, like I, to okay. me that's <laughs> what it looked like to me like he had received a a bad shock. Okay. Man, I, I used to work cable TV. I got shocked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But uh, he, uh, yeah, man, I thought, you know, I thought for sure he was, you know, I didn't know how, but, you know, was, I thought along the lines it was like an electrocution, you know, because like the way you jerk. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, so, so you guys are driving back slowly, uh -huh. and then, you know, you're, you're, well, when, You know, like I say, he was bent over with his hands in his pockets when he ran up to this. Yeah, thing. okay. But when I, I turned my head for that half a second, and mm -hmm. I turned back, and when that light hit him, he was stretched out like that. Oh, he was stretched out like that? Yeah. I mean, he was, like I say, he just hit the ground and just crumbled up like he didn't have a bone in his body, man. Okay, but when, when you're coming back and you're driving real slow and, like, you don't see it anymore, right? No, huh? uh, and no more so light. I'm pretty sure. But you were pretty sure when you got, did, what, did you go back to the spot and you're like, this is the spot where it happened? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, definitely spot. for sure. Oh, yeah, because they don't, you know, uh, there's not that many of them slash files out there. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, there's not very many clearings. You, yeah, are you guys calling his name now? Like, you don't see him, right? Well, well, well we, we stopped and we got out. And you got I out. I think we have one flashlight, and we're walking in a line, man, you know, like... Single file? Holding each other's hands, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only time in the history of logging that there's seven, six yeah. men now holding each other's hands. Yeah. Kumbaya. Yeah. They yeah, always said that uh, Steve Pierce broke down and started crying. Well, Steve didn't. Gotcha. Mike did. Really? Steve did not. Okay. Now, a 17 year old kid out there, you know. Tough as nails. He, he pretty damn tough about yeah. it. Yeah. You know, handled it better than Mike did. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so he's missing. You guys are out there. You're searching for him. How, how long did you search for him and how far did you look? Well, uh, you couldn't go, like I said, we had one flashlight. You know, it's pitch black forest out there. You know, I, even though we got a moon, you got all the trees yeah, in the way, color. you know, and, and so it's it's dark, real dark out there. Is it a clear night, by the way? Can you see the stars? Is it cloudy? Do you I remember? I don't remember okay. the stars or anything. I, I don't know. But he, um, so, you know, we did, uh, we did, um, oh, God, I can't even think of what it's called. We, we searched around that outlying area. Sure. You know, and around there and around the outlying area. And then... Uh, How long are you guys searching? 10, oh, 15? Not very long. Okay. Not, maybe, maybe not that long. Maybe five minutes? Yeah, you know, uh, long enough to walk around there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, we're getting drunk in here. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we go back to town. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, they... Uh, We, we, did, we looked a bit, you know, and during that times when Mike 
you know, fell on his knees and started bawling. And, sure. You know, I, I understand it. You know, it was his best friend. He left him out there. You know. is, is anybody else hysterical at this point, or is it mainly Mike? Oh, everybody was, a, was hysterical. Was yeah, hysterical. You sure. Know, everybody. I was scared to death, man. It wouldn't take much more for me to ball like a baby out there. <laughs> you know, I was, I've never been so scared in my life, man. Wow. Wow. I, I've been in some pretty tight, tough situations. Oh, for sure. I don't know how I got out of life. Yeah, you guys are, you guys never are that scared. You guys are tough boys. You know the old adage: they don't make them like they used to. I mean, that's you guys. I mean, you you guys are those tough as nails guys. I mean, you were telling me last night when you were ten years old, your first job, you were a surveyor yeah. out there at ten years old with a compass and a bunch of stakes. So you guys know what hard work is, and uh, I mean, for for this to bring you guys to the point of absolute fear and trembling it must have been a very significant situation it, it was it was man and uh you know um i think Dwayne smith was ex-military alan balance was well i think he spent his time in puerto rico in the navy but uh um now was ex-military you know and uh, and you know, they, yeah, well, they were a pretty tough bunch, you know, and they, uh, yeah, they're all close to hysterical, and, you know. Sure. Everyone was. But see, so our, after that, I get a little confused because they say we went to this uh, um, gas station called uh, some G and K. Uh, yeah, I, the I K gas we station. went to a telephone substation, and they had a payphone out there, and I thought we called from there. But I remember standing out on that gravel parking lot, you know, sitting well, everything up there is cinders, you know, from it's all volcanoes up there, old extinct volcanoes, and uh, all the ground is cinder rock. Mm. You know, and, uh, it, uh, I remember standing out there waiting for the. Cops come. So how, how long did you look for him again? A few minutes, and then that was it? Hmm? How long did you look for him again? A few minutes, and that was it? Yeah, it wasn't very long. And we then back there. in the truck? Yep. Right to the to the, to the telephone, right? Yeah. It's okay. a pretty, pretty slow call. drive? Pretty oh, slow gosh. drive back to town? Huh? Was it a pretty slow drive back to town, or were you guys? Yeah, because, uh, well, I said they were doing that control burning. Right. And, uh. So it puts a smoke haze in the, you know, in the air. Well, all the headlights or any lights got a yellowish glow. So it's ominous it's looking. looking. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, I, I was driving back. Oh, uh, yeah. When I think, I think Alan, Kenny, and Mike went back with the, the sheriff to look to search again. That and night? I, I, took every, I took that old truck. And took everybody else back to Snowflake. All right, this episode is sponsored by Patreos. Patreos insures and protects over 1,500 firefighters, uh, first responders, correctional officers, and police officers. Big supporters of first responders. Uh, they have customized benefits specifically first for first responders. And if you want a quote, uh, text first responder to 714 714- Six eight eight six nine nine four. All right, we're back into it now with John Gallette, eyewitness to this harrowing and horrifying event that you guys experienced almost fifty years ago. Uh, you, you've driven back to uh, the phone booth. The sheriff gets called. Um, how come Mike didn't call the sheriff? What was the reason for that? Uh, Mike was a little too upset. You know, I think. Actually, the Kenny was uh, the one that had stuff together the best. You know? The young kid, huh? Was Kenny the young kid? No. Oh, okay. Kenny was. Um, Kenny Peterson was a great guy, man. Probably the the best guy on the whole crew. You know what I mean? Just a general, all around good person. You know, and uh, that's what the other ones say about you, huh? That's what the other ones say about yeah, you. Well, Kenny, <laughs> Kenny was great. Love so talking to him. and Kenny Kenny was married, had kids, was a family man. Yeah, he had, right. He was uh, 
just newly married, I believe, you know, and, mm. uh, or yet, you know, it was kind of, you know, it was new in those marriage, you know. I think they had, he did have a kid then. Uh, did, did anybody else have kids? I mean, these are, you guys are young guys, but. No, I didn't. Family I, men did. I didn't have any kids yet. Mike was married to your sister, yeah, right? He had, he had a kids. Whole pack of little girls. My nieces. <laughs> mm. Beautiful. Every one of them, beautiful girl. Uh, they, uh, let's see, Alan, you know, we, like I said, we're from out of town, basically. Me and Alan and Dwayne. So we didn't, you know, New girls, but we didn't have any, you know, steady relationship. Uh, man, it's, I think it was just Mike and Kenny. Gotcha. Yeah. So the sheriff gets called by Kenny, uh, missing person. The sheriff comes out. What's that experience like? <laughs> you know, uh, it was a dangerous job. It was really hard. And you, uh, you couldn't get high, and do that job. I mean, right. I, I, Alan and Dwayne were the last couple of guys I brought up to work. I brought others up to work too, but they always wound up thinking they could do it, get high and do it. I always cut themselves with a chainsaw. Chainsaw doesn't slice you; it tears chunks out. Right. You know, just like it does a piece of wood, man. Sure. It'll do it to your body in a heartbeat. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And uh, so you couldn't do it. You know, and I, I had a couple of joints in my pocket, but I wasn't high, you know. Right. I wouldn't get high and do it. Sure. But, you know. Uh, that was for was after, kind of after work that. in the truck. <laughs> I didn't want to give it up. I mean, we was really hard to come by then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you guys, I mean, there was no, after work, you didn't smoke any joints, no no drinking, no, nothing no. like that. Well, you know, um, Travis and Mike didn't smoke, and Kenny, they didn't smoke. Sure. You know? and, uh, I didn't know Steve hardly at all, you know. I'd only known on Steve a few days when that happened. Uh, and uh, glad I got an honor, though. But, uh, you know, they... Uh, so us basically they come out and they're walking up close to you smelling you you know see if you got weed or alcohol on your breath and searching the back of the truck looking for any signs of and what, who was the sheriff was the sheriff gillespie no, i think it was uh I, th I can't remember if it was copeland i think gillespie didn't come out there right away you know I don't think he came out to after I'd taken those other guys out back to Snowflake, but uh. So was there just yeah, one was, one deputy, or was were there yeah, two I'd that were there? Those uh, they just divided up like in districts, you know. It's right. Like Navajo County, the whole thing was in Navajo County, but Navajo County is kind of split up in districts for it has an appointed sheriff that works that area. I think that was a deputy named Copeland that came out there when when that happened. You know, and then so, he called somebody else. So what what do you guys tell him? What's the story? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he asked every one of us, you know, the story what had happened. You know, while we're waiting for the other cops to show up, and uh, he uh. You know, uh, you know, well, you know, it, it wasn't like he didn't, you know, uh, he didn't blatantly tell you, oh, you're full of crap, you know, or you're lying, or, sure. you know, what'd you do? <laughs> you yeah. know? It, like, it was, uh, basically, it was, what did you do? It was the feeling you got from it, you know, like, all right, you know, what what do you guys really do? What really happened out there? You know, right. Nobody would believe that Did UFO story. You know, and why would you? Yeah. If you had, if somebody come up and told me that, man. Well, you know, if I was to in that totally. area, I would have thought, oh, especially yeah. back in the seventies, it's taboo. Yeah, say, That's man, taboo. I'd, I'd be thinking the same thing that the deputy. Man, you guys are high. <laughs> right. Right. Because you know you can't. 
you know, but then, uh, when the deputy talked to you, uh, was he talking to you guys individually or as a group? They did uh, both. They talked to us as a group, and they would, he would get us off to the side. That was basically, like I said, so he'd get up close to you and, and uh, kind of sniff you out. Smell, yeah. You know, and, uh, said, and then when the other one got there, that's when they started searching the back of the truck, and one of them's talking to you. And the other one searching the truck, you know, and uh, then they came out and said, that, you know, somebody's going to have to go back and somebody's going to have to go, you know, go home. Right. So, so you got the feeling that they didn't believe you and that you guys did something wrong. Yeah, definitely right from the start, <clears throat> you know. Uh, well, you know, I mean, I had some brushes with the law. Me and Alan Dallas and Dwayne Smith, you know, we all been in a little bit of trouble, you know, kind of, you know, you kind of get a feel for all the cops are acting, you know. <laughs> right. And, uh, yeah, they definitely uh, weren't believing it, but, you know. Is somebody they, speaking for the group at this point? Who 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 told the story? Well, each, each of us had to. Right. Each of us had to tell the story, you know, mm. tell that cop. They were asking you individually, you know, what, you know, what happened? What did you see? You know, and all that. So they, they're trying to, you know, they're getting evidence. They're trying to, you know, get you to cross up, you know, with the other guy, you know, that your stories don't match or, or things like that, you know. Typical. Is this all at where you're at outside of the gas station or wherever you are outside of the phone? Yeah. You, you don't go back to the police station or anything like that? No. Just, huh. Okay. There's, oh, so there's he, no police station in Heber. Uh, gotcha. At this point. So the so the, the sheriff? Sheriff? Is that what it was? Depu huh? Deputy. Deputy. So the deputy came to the phone booth where you guys oh, yeah. were. And that's where he was talking to you guys. Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. got it. I right, follow. Yeah. Mm. They, well, they told us to wait there. Mm. Yeah. We got out there pretty quick, actually. And then after after all that conversation, what was the next step? Well, I um, said, so I took, uh, see, Alan, Kenny, and Mike went back with the deputies to search. And I took the crew truck and took everybody else home. So those those guys went back out to the spot to search? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. That night, and then crazy. Uh, you know, the next morning they had a, a lot of people out there searching. But did you go out the next morning? Yeah, I did. I went out the first day. Gotcha. You know, and then, uh, but then, huh, they had some smart mouth little asshole, and then <laughs> deputy. You know, I just kept, they kind of split us up. You know, like, you know, and they had groups of searchers and they kind of split you up with them groups and their group had a deputy. And the whole time now I'm walking, that deputy's going, why don't you just tell us where the body is, you know, sure. tell us what you did with him and we can all go home and get this over with. So, so how did time. that, how did that work? The, the, the de the, were the, poli the police responsible for the search party or was it the company? Like, how did they the, kind of have... It was the sheriff's sheriff. department. Sheriff. Was, and so they had... The sheriff's department and, and forest service. And, and, and this is the next day they're doing search parties? Yeah. And so you're out there with the search party the next day? Yes. And that's what the, the deputy is saying to you? Yeah. Just uh -huh. show us where the body is. Huh? That's what he was saying. Show us, just show us where the body is? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> let, me, let me back up a little bit, John. So you go home that night, you drop everybody off. Uh, I'm sure, it, where, where are you staying at the time? Uh, I lived with Katie and Mike. You know, oh, you Mike did Rogers. live with Katie and Mike. Wow. And, uh, I think. Uh, so you had to go home and talk to Katie because you got home before Mike did, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, what wow. was that conversation like with Katie? Because <laughs> this, this is your sister, right? I'm not. I'm still not sure she believes it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, she uh, she believed something had happened. Right. You know, and she knew that, you know, uh, her husband was involved, you know. Sure. So she's worried about that, you know, what really happened and stuff. I don't think it's, she's, 
You know, her Mike's sister Dana lived there also at and, that house. And, and okay. <laughs> was Dana the one yeah, was, that Travis married yeah, and was uh -huh. dating? Okay. Yeah. So so you so you go you're the one that had to break the news to Dana and Katie. Yeah. Well tra uh, Travis and Dana weren't dating at, at the time. That time you know. But she knew Travis. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you go home, what's that conversation like? Oh man, well at first, you know, it's it's like you all oh, come on, you know. You're joking, you know, and then they don't believe you to start with, you know, and then they uh, they start <clears throat> asking you little questions about it. They start to, you know, starting to read you and and catch on that you're serious, you right? Know? And then uh, then once it finally dawns on them that you really mean what you're saying, you know, they uh, they're just kind of shocked. They, you know, it's hard. It's hard to believe a story like that. It's hard, but uh, hard sure. to believe just how the blue somebody come up and tell you. You know, I, I was gonna walk up to her and we didn't know each other. I start telling her this story right. about a UFO picked up a guy. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to step away, <laughs> right? You know, so it, yeah. It's, and then at that time, you know, it wasn't us. Uh, well known and, and you know, once and there's so many sightings anymore, so very yeah. many, you know, and uh, so many different things, you know. Totally. So Mike gets home later that night. You remember what time Mike got back? I'm sure you don't fall asleep. Uh, no, I went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So were you, did you fall asleep before Mike got back? Yeah, I think so. Okay. But I don't remember him coming back. You, you remember the next morning talking to Mike? Um, yeah. Not, uh, we all work together. Right. And we got along at work, you know, and I liked every one of them, but, you know, we weren't friends. Sure. You know, well, like me and Alan and Dwayne were friends. Mm -hmm. You know, and Travis and Mike were friends or something, you know. But you, you know, and Mike uh, weren't really close. So no, I really didn't talk to Mike much about it. Wow. I, I didn't know. Uh, I think I was basically just having coffee and thinking, you know, I'm looking outside and there's already a yard full of reporters. Is that right? The next morning. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it was just constant, man, for about a week. And you couldn't go out the door. You, but anyway, no, we didn't discuss it a lot. Uh, actually, you know, and I didn't see Steve, you know, for the, that whole time until we went to take the lie detector test. So Steve, Steve wasn't a part of the search party that day? He went, No, he didn't go back and look. I don't think. Mm. I don't think he did. No, he didn't go back out and look. He knew he was gone, you know. And after the first day, and I knew he was gone. And you ain't going to find him out there. And then, uh, you know, like I said, all the, all the guy had on, it was November. And it's, How cold does it get out it there? It's pretty darn cold. 30s, you know, 40s? freezing. Okay. You wow. know, and uh, you, you need a lot more than a Levi jacket. Right. You know, and um, you know, there was no no place to hide. Sure. You know? They had that one tower. It's called Gentry Tower. I've never seen that tower in my life. But, uh, some people figures into it somehow. But anyway, uh, you know they. Uh, No oh God, man, I don't know. It's just, I just drew a blank. That's all right. <laughs> that happens, man. Up. That happens. So you guys go out there. How many people are in the search party? Oh, um, I'd say, man, there had to be like a good hundred people out there the first day. They've got dogs, any helicopters? Um, they had helicopters. They, uh, 
I really didn't see any dogs. I, mean, I heard there was dogs, but I didn't see them. You know, and, you know, uh, we went right to the place where it happened that, you know, seemed like they were going to have dogs out there, and, you know. And if they, if they did have them, where'd they go? <laughs> yeah. Right. There wasn't nothing to follow, you know, no trail. Is, is Travis's family at this point, his brother out there searching? Uh, I believe his brother, Don, come out there. And at this point, is he and the family accusing you guys of? Uh, one of them did. I can't remember which one. Yeah, he threatened to stomp a mud hole in me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Gotcha. I remember talking on a podcast with him about that, you know, years and years later. But yeah, he was pretty upset about his brother. He didn't complain, you know. Right. Thought we killed him. Right. Everybody thought we killed him. Sure. How long did you guys search for that day, that first day? Almost all day. All day long, man. Uh, and and you thought there's no way we're gonna find him. Yeah, he's gone. I knew that. I knew I knew before we went out. You know, you're not gonna find him. We looked that night. Right. You know, and uh, if it had been hurt or something, he wouldn't have got very far. Sure. You know? And uh, it's it's rough terrain. It's thickets. You know, those pine trees. And, you know, it's hard traveling. He wouldn't have got very far. You know. Now, when, when Travis was knocked by the light, was he on his back? Was he on his stomach? What what position was his body in? When the last I saw him, sure. he was pretty much on his back. Okay. He just crumpled up and went down on his back. You know? but, now, the first day, I understand there were some guys that came out maybe from uh, New Mexico with Geiger counters. yeah. How many, was there two guys, three guys? I think there was two guys. And uh, did you know what Geiger? I only saw him for a second. I didn't pay much attention to him. Okay. What's, what's Geiger counter? It, it's it's where they can uh, detect radiation. Okay. Yeah, so, measures of radiation. Now, are they talking have, to you guys at all? Huh? Are they talking to you guys? Asking They you? ran those things on us, those Geiger counters. Uh they uh, really didn't talk to us. And then um, got people to know who they were. You know, the, the police didn't know who they were. Okay. You know, the deputies didn't know who those guys were with the Geiger counters. What was the result when they ran the Geiger counters well, over? Um, went and showered and, you know, changed clothes and all that since then. So on us and on our clothes, the reading was pretty low, you know, normal. You know, but on our hard hats, you know, you don't, don't wash them. You don't, you know, those red real high for radiation. And the area around there, the ground. Did you see the guy, did you see the needle on the Geiger counter when they put it over the helmet? Well, I could hear it and, uh, I could, you know, he, it, it was quick, you know, just, you know, mm. and then I'd write something down and. You know. Did they check anything else on the truck or any other equipment or anything like that? I think they. Uh, when we went out in that station where they, um, I don't think we had any of the equipment out there with us. You know, the the day after. Sure. Unless Mike brought that truck out there, but I don't remember him bringing it out there. I kind of think I drove out there with Dwayne Smith and he had an old station wagon. Gotcha. <laughs> what was that band called? Yes. I bet he had Yes painted on the <laughs> oh, That's awesome. That's awesome. Big old letters. <laughs> that's awesome. Now, did you see anybody else out, was the media out there? Were there any government people out there? Uh, there was, uh, there was some guys that were, you know, in suits, you know, a couple, but they weren't there a long time, you know, and they didn't mingle or talk to other people there, you know. They didn't have anything to do with anybody. They just came out there, looked around, kind of like they were listening. Right. And then they left, you know. But 
I mean, I, they were around the government, you know. I saw them everywhere I went for a while, you know. But they, uh, you know, I, I don't say I only went out that one day for the search. I think that's what was it, like two or three days they went out searching for them. It, what, why didn't you go out the following day? Did they not want you guys back out there? Or? I wasn't going to put up with that deputy again. You gotcha. Know? And, uh, I, you know, I'd already argued with him and said some things, you know. Sure. <laughs> you know, good situation to be in. Right. But, uh, you know. Yeah, it was... Uh, fine day, man. You know, I said, uh, the truth is, I, I wish it, it never had happened. But, you know, also, at the same time, I never, you know, it was something, you know, you never get another chance to see. Yeah. Because you know, I've, you know, I've, uh, I'm always checking the sky, you know, with con you know, I just can't help it. You know, I'm sure. always looking around completely. I know where everything is around me, who's around me, you know, all the time. You know, it's just habit, you know, and uh, from looking, you know, from being scared, basically. How right. old were you again? I, I don't remember how old you were when this happened. I was, I just turned 21. 21. Yeah. Well, how how well, old are you now, John? How old am I now? Yeah. Good God. 50, <laughs> it's when it's seven, 69. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 69. <laughs> That's awesome. What were the next few days like for you? And are, are, well, I said, you couldn't you, go out, couldn't go out the door. You mm -hmm. didn't have somebody sticking a microphone in your face and taking your picture. And those guys in the suits, the the government people, man. You always tell a government vehicle in those days because they were all like a real ugly paint job and the rims Same were always color. painted to match yeah. the car, you know. You you can spot them 100 miles away, you know. Are they, are they talking to you at all or are no, they just following they you? They never said a word to me, man. They just, um, what was really surprised me is that I could go somewhere and when I got there, there they were. Yeah. You know, I uh, didn't tell anybody where I was going, you know, and didn't have cell phones and stuff then, you know, and uh, just go out door and I head somewhere, and there they are when I got there. You know, I'd see them when I left, and they'd be sitting there waiting for me when I got there. Same couple of guys? Yeah. Same guys. Yeah. They never looked at you, you know, they always looked just straight ahead. Hmm. You know, and uh, never even, like, Man, like he didn't exist or something, but you know, you know, all, all wearing those stupid, them, uh, the, the glass, the, the, the uh, reflective, yeah, you can't see their can't eyes. can't see their eyes. <laughs> you know, they're, all, they're all just in there, you know. Well, you know what they don't yeah. they're doing, you know. <clears throat> so, are you uh, out and about in the community in the next few days? Are you going to the yeah, grocery uh, store, or going to the well, bar? You know, uh, Hell, I wasn't working. Yeah. <laughs> so we had lots of free time, you know. We are going out partying and stuff, yeah. You know, and, uh, yeah. Is the crew getting back together at this point and talking about what happened? Um, well, you know, like me and Alan Dallas and Dwayne, you know. And I said, Steve, you know, he, he was just a kid, man. Yeah. He was basically at home with his mama, you know. And I don't think she's letting him out. <laughs> right. So at what point does the community start to turn on you guys and, and start accusing oh, you was, of murder? It was just a couple of days. They, uh, and uh, the community was egged on by the, uh, the sheriff, the, the law enforcement, into thinking that. Because they told them, you know, that, you know, that it's, it's just a matter of time. We'll, we'll get these guys, you know, and, and, uh, and they told everybody. They even had town meeting. Wow. 
were, were you guys there at the town meeting? <laughs> we were, no. We were invited. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was, I was never invited to the, oh, you know, I said it's mostly Mormon. And, uh, sure. Yeah, you know, so they had a meeting at the Mormon church, and uh, and uh, old St. Flake was telling them, yeah, they killed, you know, we're pretty sure they killed them. And the, the preacher, the matter of time, we'll have them all in jail. Who was saying that, the minister? No, the the town marshal, St. Flake. Oh, a snowflake? Yeah. Gotcha. And is he interviewing you guys? Are you guys getting called in to... Huh, no. Nothing? Uh, no interviews no, at this I point? Didn't, I, you know, I, I was pretty good at avoiding the law. You know, I, you know, so <laughs> I, didn't, uh, I didn't talk to them at all until they come up and ask if take the lie detector test. Yeah. You know, and, uh, they didn't demand or something. You know, they, they offered for us to take a lie detector test to clear our names. You know? Right. So, you know, we did, so we jumped on it. At what point does it, it turn and you guys realize they're going to try to pin a murder on us and we could go to jail? <laughs> Me and Alan figured it out pretty quick. <laughs> you know? and, and if they even got it, you know, um, the reports and that, you know, it was either me or Alan that was it. Is that right? That killed Travis. I've never heard that it could have been you. How come they were suspecting you? I don't know. <laughs> it was because, yeah. because you and Alan were so close? No. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, I have my own. Me and Alan never had trouble with the law. You know, other than like being questioned or something. And you know, we never had trouble with the law together. But we both had independently records, you know. And, right. Uh, some of it was violent, you know. You know. Sure. Okay. So that was the only that was the only motive that they were trying to figure out for yeah. you for you to be doing that that you had a record. Well, you know, Steve, you know, seventeen, yeah. his kid living at home, uh, Kenny's family Mormon, guy, you mm -hmm. know, Mike's Mormon, you know, uh, you know, me and. Alan and Dwayne about the only ones that weren't right you know, in some way or another religious or you know, or tied to some religion or something you know sure so you know they uh, we didn't uh, and we had you know, said me and me and Alan well I don't know why they didn't suspect Dwayne because it was just guilty as stuff as I was <laughs> <You know? laughs> we did it together <laughs> right that's funny. Is the townspeople, when you're going out, are, are town folk accusing you verbally? Yes. Are uh -huh. they? Tell me about some of those interactions. Oh, man, you know, you're just walking down the street. And, I know. Man, any time before that, I'm um, walking down the street, and I feel like, you know, I was alone there. Nobody, you know, in that town, nobody sure. knew me or nothing. You know, I didn't associate with townspeople that much. You know, party with the girls, you know, that was about it. But, um. They, uh, yeah, they start yelling stuff at you and walking out. Yeah, we know what you did, you know, and, and, uh, murder and shit like that. Going to a bar, you didn't know if you get into a fight or someone going to buy you a beer, you know. Mm. So they buy you a beer or did you get into a fight? <laughs> a little bit of both. Uh, you know, I tried, you know, I never... To me, man, I never was that good at fighting. You know? <laughs> I lost at least half of them. <laughs> yeah. You had to do it, you know, but I just wasn't that good at it. So how does the polygraph come about? Because this is such a crucial piece to the story, and it gives it incredible validity. Well, I said, uh, I can't remember if it was Marlon Gillespie that came up and asked us. Well, I remember him standing out. It was, he was just standing in the door of his car. You know, he had his patrol car. He was standing there, he was leaning his arm on there. He goes, hey, you know, we uh, wanted to ask you guys if, you know, if we set you up a polygraph test, if you're willing to take it. And, uh, you know, I said, you can clear your name up. And I went, hell yeah, you know, we'll do it. Then, you know. 
So they were pretty biased against us. You sure. Know, we got to thinking before we even got down there. I'm thinking, man, that might have been a mistake. You know, mm. they might just be setting us up. Right. You know, and uh, now I'm in Dallas. But they haven't found. They haven't found. Obviously, the the polygraph is to see if you you killed the guy, right? Yes. Okay. Got uh, it. Right. Yeah. The there was only a couple of questions about the UFO. Everything else was if I had done anything to Travis, and I saw anybody, or if I knew of anybody, you know. And you know, there was only a couple of questions. Like three or four. Yeah, about UFO. Did it? You know, I think it was basically did. Um, I believe I saw one, and did I believe that Travis Walton was taking my one? That was just a yes or no question. I, I actually yeah. have the yeah all all polygraph questions are yes or no. I actually have the original questions here. Do you want me to read some of them? Huh? I have That's the not everything they asked me on that. On the on yeah, so I polygraph. Do you That's to, not all the questions they asked me. Okay. Huh? Interesting. Yeah, they uh. Because, you know, I was in the military, right? Sure. So, well, Cy Gilson he asked me when he was in the, one of the questions, I, I know I remember real well, because he asked me if I ever stole anything from the government while I was in the military. Of course, I said no, you know, and it showed I was lying, of course. <laughs> <laughs> a couple <of> beers. <laughs> you want me to read these? Can you tell me if you remember these or if they're... Sure. Okay. So here's what I have is question one. November 5th, 1975, in the forest area called Turkey Springs, did you see a large glowing object hovering in the air? They got that down as the first question. They have that down as the first question. It was not? No, it was not. Okay, the second one on here says, while you were standing near the... I don't remember them ever asking me if I saw a glowing... Interesting. So the second one says... While you were standing near the UFO-like object, did you believe you were struck by... Oh, you know, this may be for Travis. Oh, yeah. Th- this this be, must yeah. be the night. This is the 93 yeah. questionnaire that he took. This is not the original one, because I know he did one in, in 93. So um, so back to that event. I know there was a, uh, uh, qu- a quite a fiasco at the courthouse. Tell us about the argument that took place there. Oh, well, you know... Uh... We uh, we want you know some some um, some kind of you know like uh, I want something in writing or something you know, or something saying we're going to get fair treatment we're going to be asked you know things like that and then um, people are starting to have second thoughts about doing it you know because like I said you know they. They weren't very forthcoming with their answers when we asked them questions, you know, and stuff. So we're getting a little nervous and worried about it. And sure. we were locked up. You know, we we weren't in a jail cell. Right. But we could not leave that building, could not leave where we were. You could go outside. They had a recreation area for the prisoners. It was The courthouse was... a jail in the courthouse together. So they had a recreation area. There wasn't no prisoners, but they uh was, we'd go out in that yard and smoke and go back in that room. That was it. You know, for ten hours. We weren't arrested but we weren't going to work. None of y'all got a lawyer or anything like that. Hmm? None of y'all got a lawyer or anything like that? No, huh no. Well, you know, we were we we knew, you know, we were telling the truth. Yeah. Then, we didn't really didn't think it out, think ahead. Yeah, yeah. Enough, you know, you, got, you guys were young. You know, uh, man, we were just like following each other's ideas. You know, to uh, you know, looking for answers, looking some way out. You know, just wasn't nothing. You know, like what happened? How? You know, why? You know, just. So anyway, we uh, so so the argument, the back to the argument. So people were thinking, hey, we don't want to do this anymore. They're getting well, I don't know, particularly didn't want to do it. 
What, what? But Alan's mom was there with him, and she was kind of an <laughs> instigator. Huh? Yeah. Orvella was her name. She was Orvella? Great, Orvella. Mm. She's a great old gal, but you know she was an instigator, and, and mm -hmm. I was her son, and she was, you know, that's a real mother. Let me tell you, she, yeah. <laughs> she'd protect that kid no matter what, right. <laughs> no matter how guilty he was. She'd be there. <laughs> but uh, are your parents there? Huh? Are your parents there with you? My parents? Yeah. No, they both passed a long time ago. Okay. Uh, no, are they there at the time? Had they passed in 1975? Oh, I, I uh, met my mom and dad kicked me out when I was 14. Gotcha. So I really didn't have much to do with them. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So you're there. It's a pretty contentious situation. How nervous are you guys? Hmm? How nervous are you? Oh, I'm scared to death, you know. I'm almost as scared as when I saw that thing because... My life's on the line here, you know. Uh, you know, everything, my whole future and everything depends on this one guy being honest. Right. You know, Cy Gilson. Unfortunately, he was very honest. You know? what, what was Cy's demeanor like? What was Cy like? He was, was he... just straight out business, you know. He didn't, uh, he'd maybe crack a smile now and then, you know, or say something, you know, that, you know, but mostly it was just straight down the line business. You know, he had five lie detector tests. Um, I had to take three lie detector tests that night. Three separate ones with the same questions? Yes. Wow. And uh, everybody did. Wow. Except Alan Dallas. You know, and then, uh, so what happened with Alan? What was the, the situation there? He, uh, he just got paranoid. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, you know, there's a lot of things they could have asked him. He could have went to prison for or something. Sure. And uh, I think he was afraid of that and that they were going to start. And then, you know, and uh, they had a criminal record. And, and um, I think his mom had told him, if you don't think it's going right, just stop. You know, they're inadmissible. And of course, sure. uh, you can't hold it against you if you pass or fail. Right. You know, so tell him just quit. If you don't think it's right, quit. So he did. You know. And so he, he just got up, walked out. Yeah, he pulled the things off. And, and so he's inconclusive. I know he took one later on. We'll, we'll talk about that. Um, you guys get to the end of the day. I understand it's a very long day for you guys. And what happens? He... It, uh, size uh, they don't well, give you the results right yeah he, he wasn't going to say nothing man he, he was headed out the door with the results in his little briefcase headed out and mike stopped him hey you know you gotta tell us something you know and, uh, and he goes uh he goes i don't know how to how to i don't know how to put it but apparently you know you all believe in what you're saying <laughs> wow <laughs> so he was stunned, obviously. Yeah. And and he's known as, at that time, from what I understand, one of the best polygraphers in Arizona. Yeah, he was a top one in Arizona. He, um, you know, Gillespie, there you go. <laughs> he couldn't believe it when he told me. I bet he was upset. <laughs> yeah, oh, he was, man. He just that's shaking his head and That's funny. Around. He says... You all believe the story instead of saying you all told the truth. Yeah. Yeah. You all believed in what you're you saying. You all believe in what you're saying, not, well, it looks like you're all telling the truth. Yeah. It's <laughs> interesting. But, you know, they they don't word it like that. Sure. Because, you know, they got to cover their asses, you know. So, Cy, later on, Gilson said, I was amazed of the results of the examination. He couldn't believe that you guys unanimously passed Les Dallas, who ended up passing a lie detector later on when he actually took it. And when he interviewed Travis in 1993, Cy Gilson said, Travis is not lying from his experience. It did happen as he said it did, exactly as he said it did. That's yeah. pretty powerful testimony. And the president of the American Polygraph Institute said six out of seven or even five out of six at the time uh, passing a, a lie detector like that is impossible. Said it's it's 
astronomically impossible. It's yeah. more than more than one in a million that you guys would all pass the polygraph, which is incredible because it shows that you said maybe, you know, one, maybe, maybe two, but to have all of you una unanimously passing and some of you guys multiple times have passed this polygraph is incredible. And that is such a testament to what you guys experienced. Yeah, I, you know, I, I agree with you that. I think that, that um, to me, when that guy said that, it, it proved to me that, you know, no, I mean, it didn't prove to me. It, uh, I can say, hey, there you go. There's your proof. You know, uh, leave me alone. You know. So once the community receives the results or starts to hear about it, what's their well? Travis take? was back that night. Oh, it was that night that it he was, was uh, returned back. Well, so you know, like real, real late. Yeah. So he's yeah. missing five days. You guys take this polygraph, and then that night you're at Mike's house. Tell us about that. Let's let's get into that bit. Um. I, uh, well, I didn't know Travis was back, uh, um, for a couple of days after he was back. His brother had taken him and hit him out down in, uh, they say Phoenix, but I thought it was Tucson. But anyway, the brother had taken him down there and hit him out. So, and, uh, I did, man, it just seemed like I can kind of remember seeing him. And I remember him sitting at the kitchen table and he looked like crap man he was just like a shell of himself you know like he was just sunk down and and the eyes scared you know so how far how how long after he returned that you saw travis for that first time yourself i man i, I would have swore it was the night he came back it was the first time i saw him but you know, it's 50 years ago. Sure. So, you know, yeah, maybe, I mean. Maybe it, it wasn't. Yeah. Know, it could have been a few days. Right. You know, but, uh, oh, man, it was. Uh, Brian, can you see yeah, if you I'd can say find about a week. You know, gotcha. About a week. week. You know. Can you see if you can find the original lie detector I'm questions? Okay, right. cool. Um, and so he's. For the most part, from what you're describing, it sounds like he's got shell shock, PTSD. Yeah, definitely. Is, is he talking? Are you, you know, uh, mm -hmm. conversing much with him at this point? Uh, okay. No. Uh, he would try to answer a question or something. Somebody asked him something else, you know. You know and, but he wouldn't talk about what had happened. Right. Now, I've known Travis a long time, and... Uh, I totally believe it happened exactly like he said. Because I cannot ever tell you one time that guy lying. Mm. Not once. Which right. is, re it's really interesting because there's really two parts of this. There's what you all witnessed together, what you all experienced together. And then there's Travis, there's part B, there's part A, which is that. And then part B is what Travis experienced. And only Travis can obviously tell that side yeah. of his story because you guys weren't there. And so all you, you know, going on, and he didn't experience what you guys experienced of everything post that. And so Travis is back now. Um, Travis has been gone for five days, but he thinks he's only been gone for hours. Yeah, he didn't have, he has no idea at all. No clue. But, you know, uh, now, if, you know, this just came to my mind. Why did he call his brother if he didn't know? He didn't know all that. Why did you, you ask him, why did Travis call his brother? Yeah, I never thought of that. How do you mean? Uh, well, he didn't call. His, he called his brother-in-law Grant Neff. Uh, if he didn't know this had happened to him and all that, why is he calling? So he must have had some idea. Sure. You know, and, uh, but he, the way he talks, he didn't remember none of what 
happened when he first came back. He didn't remember none of the stuff that happened to him right. on that ship. Very little. Mm. And it was... Uh, so what's your recollection of him being returned? Tell us a little bit about your perspective of that, because I know some of the listeners may not know that side of it. So it's after the polygraph. What what time do you know about what time Travis was returned and in, in that situation? Um, man, uh, was in Arizona until I think it was probably because we were there till uh, oh late. We were there late and getting those lie tech tests. So he was. Uh, it had to be like. Midnight, one in the morning, or something like that. You know, when he called his brother in law, because it was middle of the night. You know, same night when he come to, he was kind of up on a hill, and you look down, and you see the town of Heber, and we all, you know, been through there every day. You know, so we knew, you know, and when he saw that, he could, he recognized, right. You know where he was. Sure. He ran down the hill to the phone booth. You know, I can't believe those phone booths are still there. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, no phones. You guys have <laughs> some. Yeah, you guys have some good pictures too that uh, Susan showed us last night, which oh, is pretty right? cool. Yeah. So, and I know Travis was taken down to. Uh, it sounds like Phoenix, maybe Tucson. And there was a, a pretty well-known doctor that conducted some tests on him, and he was he was negative for drugs or any hallucinogens yeah, in his system. And stuff, you know. So not nothing like that, because I know that was a big criticism, which we'll get into in a minute. Because uh, as many people who are been fascinated and and maybe have become open to the ideas of extraterrestrials and and UFOs, there's been just as much criticism towards you guys, which I know is probably frustrating because, you know, ever since I've known you, it's, it's, uh, it's not set well with you that people have called you a liar and oh, no. accused you. Of, All the rest of it I can handle except for that. Yeah. You know, I, you know, that's why, you know, I left. Right. I said, I went somewhere where nobody knew me. Nobody, you know, nobody could associate me with that. You know, sure. I went down to Godforsaken Hole in Blythe, California. <laughs> oh, you were in Blythe? Beautiful Blythe, huh? Yeah. Well, my parents lived in Quartzsite. Oh, right. Okay. So gotcha. Yeah. I knew uh, I knew somebody there, and so I get a job working maintenance at the hospital. So I went down there and did that. You know, I I I got a Arizona Department of Public Safety. You got the original oh, questions? Yeah. November 13, 1975. This is the document. Sheriff Marlon Gillespie. There yeah. it is. The relevant questions asked and the answers given are as follows. This is Paul Graf examination, Mr. John John Goulet, right here. Yeah. All, oh, it has all the names. Okay. The question one that they asked you, did you did you cause Travis Walton any serious physical injury last Wednesday afternoon? That was the first question they asked you. Yeah. Second question they ask you is, do you know if Travis Walton was physically injured by some other member of your work crew last Wednesday? That was the second question. So they're asking you if you knew if someone else had injured him. Yeah. Third question was, do you know if Travis Walton's body is buried or hidden somewhere in that Turkey Springs area? That was the third question. Yeah, they're out to get you. <laughs> and the yeah. fourth question... <laughs> Did you tell the truth about actually seeing a UFO last Wednesday when Travis Walton disappeared? That's it, right? Yeah. Those are the four questions. No. Uh, no, there's more? Uh, no, there's a lot more. A lot more? Oh, yeah. Well, those are the, the four questions they have in this report signed by... I, I think when they do a polygraph, they have a lot of introductory questions okay, okay. to gauge, yeah, you know, you, like yeah, what color shirt am I wearing a red shirt? Here's, here's the report. These polygraph examinations prove that these five men did see some object that they believe to be a UFO. Wow. And that Travis Walton was not injured or murdered by any of these men on that Wednesday. If an actual UFO did not exist and the UFO is a non- 
made hoax. Five of these men had no prior knowledge of a hoax. What a setup. <laughs> no such determination can be made of the six man whose test was inconclusive, but it's inconclusive because he didn't want to take the test. Right. Yeah, but, but he ended up later on taking the test and, and uh, Alan Dallas did pass the test. Okay. Yeah. So this is the actual document. That's powerful. Well, that's, uh, but that's not the, that's not all the questions. No. Okay. What other but, questions you know, do you I mean, remember? Huh? What other questions do you remember? Well, there was several about a UFO. Really? Uh, um, did I believe I saw one? Did I believe Travis was taken by one? Uh, you know, um, oh, that's about all I remember of it. But, uh, and the murder part, I was right. You know, I think, I thought there was a couple more questions there too, but. Uh, I was pretty much raised in the, in the West, you know, Northwest, Southwest. Uh, uh, most of the time was spent like out in forest areas and, and uh, um, I'd never seen anything unusual before like that. But anyway, uh, oh, you know, I'm a Vietnam veteran. Uh, I, um, How many tours to Vietnam? Huh? How many tours Vietnam? Just one? Yeah, just one. I was actually, it was the last uh, six months of the Vietnam War. I was over there. You were in the Navy, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, we appreciate your service. Thank you yeah, for securing our freedom. I wasn't out there, you know. Yeah, you served, though. That's, yeah, that's huge. I partied with some of those grunts, but I wasn't out there fighting yeah. them. <laughs> Man, maybe in town. <laughs> after, after Vietnam, what, what did you do after that? What did I do after that? Yeah. Um, well, um, actually, <laughs> <coughs> me and Alan Dallas, uh -huh. mm. we, uh, they had a program to go to, uh, Arizona State University for veterans. Yeah. So we went in to that, we went in half on an apartment, you know, a furnished apartment, and done some little co-ed <laughs> yeah, it was great. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> just a couple of young young veterans, you know, and, and uh, so and June Allen you know, just basically, you know, worked uh, mostly. I've, I've worked hard all my life, you know, and uh, you know, sucks now that I got to retire, but you know, uh, uh, I've never, you know, I've never really. Um, until that day, I never really ever, ever thought about a UFO. You know, I, I, I just didn't cross my mind. And mm. I spent years out, the, out there in those woods, you know, and, and traveling all over the United States at times, you know. And uh, thought like that never crossed my mind, man, that, uh, that something like that would ever happen. Right. So, uh, but, oh, I don't know, man, now I'm married to Susan, and, mm -hmm. you know, and just enjoying life, you know. How many kids do you have again? How many kids? Yeah, how many kids? I do you have? have five kids. That's awesome. That's great. Seventeen you, grandchildren. So, wow. Seventeen grandchildren. Wow. Huh? Seventeen? Yes. That's amazing. Some That's of great. my grandchildren have already done their time in the service. You know, I'd be proud of that, man. You, that, you've got nineteen now because I think my two uh, daughters adopted you and Susan oh, yeah. last night. <laughs> they, were, they were great, man. They were the cutest right. little girls. You know, it reminds me of having little girls. Yeah. You know, yeah, I miss it, but, you know, the, I don't have to live with them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't think I'd have the patience nowadays to uh, raise kids. Right. You know. Now, you were born and you grew up in Snowflake, right? Uh, no, I did not. Uh, okay. Actually, I was born in Snowflake, but I, my parents lived in Sholo, but Sholo didn't have a... There were real small towns, and the Sholo didn't have a hospital or maternity clinic, and gotcha. Snowflake did. So I went to Snowflake and was born there, but, you know, I see, you know, I lived in Sholo when my parents did. Uh, we traveled around on my dad, you know, and we, uh, he 
seemed to like traveling. We traveled around a lot. You know, we didn't have spent like a year. I was always a new kid in school. You know, right? It was you know, it was good and bad. You know. But, so, yeah. how old were you when you moved to Snowflake? When well, I moved to Snowflake, uh-huh. the that last time, you know, when this happened, man, I was uh, I was twenty. Twenty. Because I I just turned twenty one right before that happened. Gotcha. Okay. What what was the community of Snowflake like? Hmm? What was the community of Snowflake like? Uh, at the time, it was uh, it was a very strong Mormon community. Great people, man. They'll stand beside each other. You know, wonderful people. But, you know, if you weren't <laughs> Mormon, you were, right. You know, you were kind of a outcast to begin with. You yeah. Know? Are you? Do you have a Mormon background yourself? No. Did, did the other guys? The, did the crew have a um, background? I believe Kenny Peterson and and maybe Travis himself a little bit. But, okay. You know, uh, I uh, Mike Rogers. He was raised Mormon. Gotcha. How how'd you guys end up hooking up? So you met Alan Dallas, and I've never heard this before. So this is kind of intriguing. You met Alice, uh, uh, Alan Dallas in the Air Force, or I'm sorry, in the in no, the Navy. Man, we, were, we were buddies before we okay. in the service. We were supposed to, supposed to go in the service together, and he went in. Uh, but he went in the Seabees. I went in the regular Navy. Gotcha. You know, and, uh, which he learned a good trade. Right, know? right. I, I worked on a, a five inch fifty four cannon. You know, they ain't much call for that out here. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, it's interesting because they make Alan Dallas out to be kind of the bad guy of the group, and they make him out to be a little bit of the scapegoat, especially initially, and and, and they make him kind of a, like an, an obscure figure. So I never knew, this is the first time I ever heard, that you were friends with him previously. So how did you guys get hooked up with uh, Mike and the rest of the crew? Mike was my brother-in-law. Okay, that's he right. He was married to my sister, Katie. Gotcha. Uh, uh Honestly, I got in some trouble with the law in mm-hmm. Phoenix, so I had to leave town. <laughs> yeah. You fought and, uh, the law and the law won, huh? Huh? You fought the law and the law won. <laughs> well, I don't know. This depends on how you look at it. <laughs> I did all right. Yeah. <laughs> but I, uh, so I went up there to go to school, and, and you know, the, that was the first time I ran into the Mormon thing was my first day of school they kicked me out for my hair being too long. Wow. So I went and got a went and got a haircut, went back a couple of days later and they kicked me out again for my hair being too long. Wow. That's I funny. Thought, you know, I thought that's against my constitutional rights. They always yeah. sue us. Well don't come back till you get a haircut. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I never went back. I love that. So how long, before the incident happened, before it took place, how long did you guys work together? I'd done that work for Mike off and on. Um, It just wasn't very long, you know. I never did it for a long period of time, you know. uh, Well, what what, what was the work? Like, what were you guys doing specifically? What was your job with that crew? They had uh, logged up in there about 40 years before that. Well, okay. After they logged, they had a couple wet years, and the ground was all tore up okay. from, uh, you know, equipment, stuff, yep. logging trucks and all that. Right. Anyway, so the the with a, a wet years, you know, it uh, was a lot of seed, a lot of pine seed. Mm-hmm. So the pine trees were growing up in thickets instead of, being spaced out, the zone was supposed to be like five of those to an acre, and they were. So they're right next to each other now, huh? Mm-hmm. They were right next to each other now. Oh man, they were, you know, right there against. Uh, they were uh, like forty years old and those twigs, you know. So the point was to cut them out and space them out. We're cleaning up the forest from where they logged. Is basically what we're doing. Okay. And you cut them out and space them out ten feet apart. And uh, probably one out of three will live after you do that because of the shock and all that, you know. And then, uh, but then it grows, you know, it allows the tree to be able to yeah. grow, get the nutrition, sunlight, and stuff it needs, you know. Gotcha. So it's restoration of 
of the forest. Okay, right there. there you go. Long, long days. Oh, yeah, man, long, real long day. Nice. Uh, what Mike, time were you guys getting up and getting there in the huh? morning? What were you going to say about Mike? Well, Mike was a, a great procrastinator. <laughs> he would, <laughs> he'd get these contracts, and then he'd wait. He wouldn't go start on them. He'd wait, go do this, go do that, you know, and uh, put it off, put it off. And then all of a sudden, man, it's, it's time to get something done. Yeah. So that's why... We're always behind on the contract. You know? Gotcha. And always because you start out behind. Right. You know? And uh, but we were good. We were really. So good. You guys were busting your butts, huh? Yeah, he had a great, he had a great crew. What know? What time do you guys get there in the mornings? Oh man, about daylight. Uh, daylight. Yeah, and it was in November when that happened. So it was probably oh about six in the morning. We'd get yeah. There, you know? Was it getting pretty cold at that point? Was it? In the mornings, it'd be cold. Right. You know, after you start working, you you're carrying a chainsaw sure. all day long. You know, you know the the tank would hold forty five minutes of gas. Okay. So when after that forty five minutes is up, you'd have to pry your hand off that handle. Yeah. Because it's just locked there. there right. You know? And uh, yeah, it was it was hard work, man. I was, you know, I was twenty. I was in great shape, you know, I was as solid as a rock, you know. Right. And everybody there was, you know. I think the one poor guy, man, that really shouldn't have been out there would have been Dwayne Smith because he was, he was really, really tall. Mm -hmm. And his job was piling. We'd, we had to cut it, you know, like along the roads for a uh, 100 yards along the roads on both sides. You know, you would have to... Uh, cut it into four foot lengths and then pile it up to burn later, you know, which they were doing when that happened. This is reminding me of like uh, those logging competitions that they yeah. do. Those guys are climbing up the trees right. and chopping right. stuff down. They do these big <laughs> yeah. logging competitions. You could have been out there with your buddies doing that, you know? Yeah, like, you know. <laughs> they, weren't, they weren't doing it for fun <laughs> though. Paul, <laughs> Paul Bunyan competition. Yeah. Like there was some something about, uh, Alan Dallas dropping a tree in the tip of it, right. brushing Travis, you know. Right. And, now and they, like they, that was, we did that all day long. Sure, but they, you know, they didn't. You, you got good, man. You could judge how far, you know, and you could drop it. Just the very tip of it would slap them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that upset Travis, though, didn't it? Uh, yeah, he was. Uh, Travis and Alan didn't get along anyway. Right. Um, they they just were two different people. That's you know, both of them great guys, but sure. just two different people. How long did you guys all know each other? I mean, is this? Uh, oh, I knew. Uh, oh, Mike. You know, I knew him since I was probably about ten years old. But uh, um, Travis, I knew when I was, you know. I met him when I was real young. I, I had to leave town, you know. And then uh, out in Dallas, man, we grew up, you know, we spent our teenage years in the same neighborhood, you know. Right. Everything that entails, you know. Yeah, sure, sure. Did you guys hang out outside of work? Me and Hal in Dallas, yeah. Yeah. And but, Dwayne Smith. Okay. <laughs> Dwayne Smith is also a friend of mine from Phoenix. I brought up there to... Go to work, you know, and, uh, great guy, but it's a shame that they're, uh, both of them are gone now, you know. What year did uh, Alan Dallas pass away? I don't know. Yeah, what about Dwayne, I, I, you remember? I lost contact. I After that happened, I'd gone somewhere where nobody knew me. Sure. I didn't tell anybody about it for years and years. I never, nobody had any idea. That's the way I wanted it. You know? Right. You know, I didn't want. I wish it never had happened. Right. Uh, but, you know, it did. So. That's interesting. I think most of the guys have expressed that. And one of the most powerful thing when when you watch other interviews with these guys, almost fifty years later, the turmoil it's caused in their life, the emotion, the panic that they still have yeah, uh, over this incident, and how much it's affected their life negatively, uh, is pretty powerful. Um, so tell us about 
the, the, that day, that morning, was there anything out of the usual, anything different about that day or anything about the days leading up to the event that was off or, or different at all? Um, I think Alan and Travis had gotten to a scrap once. That was, that was the only thing I can recall that was different about, I mean, every day, you know, he's getting in that old international truck. and Sure. <laughs> what year was that truck, by the way? Huh? What year was that truck? Do you remember? I, I don't know. It was old. <laughs> the thing was an old beater, huh? Yeah, you know. Uh, well, it didn't matter, man. With Mike, he'd get a vehicle. Yeah. And it wasn't two weeks. He had tore the mirror off or, <laughs> you know, ran into a tree on yeah. the side or something, you know. Not, but, not the truck you want to try to be outpacing a UFO in, I'm sure. <laughs> what, wanted something a little bit faster, reliable. Well, it was a uh, yeah, it was a good old reliable truck. I mean, sometimes you know you have to use mixed gas in those chainsaws, and sometimes they you know when the truck run out of gas, we pour mixed gas in there mm-hmm. and still ran it. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. And make it home. <laughs> so you're saying on the day of the incident, you don't. Uh, feel like any like you know sometimes in the morning you wake up you got a funny feeling about something and then later in the day something happens and you say man something felt not right that morning like you don't you don't feel like that it was just a no, nor- normal you know, day I, I I usually have good gut instinct yeah you know, yeah but I, I didn't nothing out of the norm huh okay you know that morning I didn't didn't feel differently it just Another day at work. You know. Gotcha. What what kind of, and this probably most of the audience isn't going to care about this, but I lived in New Zealand for 10 years and I fell trees, obviously not nearly what you fell uh, in your lifetime. I was more felling for, for fun and firewood to burn at home. Were you guys steel, steel guys or husky guys or what, what kind of equipment were you using back then? Do you remember uh, what kind of chainsaws? Used, uh, uh, still old 41 chainsaws. Gotcha. They're, uh, That's what I had to steal as well. Yeah, it was, fifty uh, inch. Yeah, they were good little saws. Yeah, you know? I don't think it runs forever. Anymore. Sorry, husky guys, you husky fans out there. He's a, he's a still man. You heard it here. Well, you know, <laughs> I didn't. I never saw any. I mean, those other thinning trees. I never saw none of that. Right. You know, but that's not that old of a of a well known brand. Sure. You know, so it's more a lot more recent than you know when that you know like I said that still. I think he had a, I think Mike had a deal with the guy that ran the chainsaw shop, you know, and uh, so we got him, you know, we can pay him off. <laughs> right. <laughs> that guy, he was the character man about things like that. So, <laughs> so you guys are out there, you're busting your butts, you're, you're behind on the logging contract, so I'm sure Mike's pushing you guys pretty hard, and... Um, uh, days are getting long. I'm sure you guys are tired. Sounds like Alan and Travis aren't getting along too well. They had a little bit of a, a scrimmage there. Um, so tell us about that morning, that day, and uh, then we'll get into the event and, and what happened, what transpired. Well, um, you know, like I said, it was, it was a typical day to start out with, you know. and then, I mean, the whole day was just a typical day, you know. It just, we... Uh, you know, you just got out there and busted your butt, you know, and then, uh, you know, he, the, and Mike really didn't push us. Mostly it was a competition between us. Right. You know, we're trying to outdo the other guys, you know, and, and uh, you know, talk crap to them, you know, sure. about it you yeah. know, later, you know, and things like that. But, you know, because you got, um, and Mike got paid by the acre. You know, so you had to cut so many acres in order to turn in a claim and get paid. You know, so that's what we're always we're, we're doing, trying to get them acres done to, so we can get some money. You know, yeah. I remember one day, man, we were sat out in front of the bank waiting to, for Mike to come out with our pay, and uh, you know we were a pretty rugged looking bunch. You know, we're standing out there in the parking. Somebody called the police and said, we're robbing the bank. And they <laughs> 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 so, oh, man, you don't believe that. <laughs> These guys awesome. got changed, chainsaws. They're robbing the bank. <laughs> yeah. So the law, the law knew you guys. I think it's fair to say the, the law knew who you guys were. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah well, uh, 
Mm. Oh, they only had a. Let me see. The city marshal was uh, Saint Flake or Sanford was his name. Sanford mm -hmm. Flake and his the deputy for that area of the county was uh, Glenn Flake, his brother. Oh wow. And the, the county prosecutor was Jay Flake. Oh gosh. <laughs> wow. So you you know, if you got arrested, you're you're probably pretty much screwed. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> right. And But I, yeah, they knew us, you know, we or me and Alan and Dwayne, so you know. Sure. We getting scraps every now and then in a bar or something. Right. That was before that happened, you know. So I think people are unaware of the event actually, because a lot of people call it the Snowflake event or the Travis Walton event, but it actually didn't occur in Snowflake. It was in outside of Heber. Yeah, it was, uh, oh, it, was a, it was a good long drive to work, you know. It, it, yeah, you know, you had to you go down, getting down the highway was a 30 minute drive to Heber, but then you had, I think, 13 miles of dirt road to go down after that, you know. And, uh, and it was rough road, real slow traveling. You know, so it was a long drive. You sleep on the way to work and way home. You know, it's, but it, uh, it was man, it was good hard work. Yeah, good. What were you getting paid back then? Oh, I couldn't. Even were you guys remember. paid could, paid by the hour? Yeah, for Mike. Well. I'm not quite sure. I never really paid much attention. Yeah. You know. Just, just made sure the check cleared? Yeah, we just, you know, yeah, made sure the check didn't bounce, yeah. <laughs> that was, you know, and, uh, you know, I really don't know what I was making. I made pretty good money, though. Right. And uh, I said, you know, we we could turn out some acres in a heartbeat, you know. We were right. fast, you know, and... Uh, but, uh, you know, you had competition up there, too, you know. You had to stay good to get the contracts. The Forest Service would not only would look at the price that you bid on the contract, they'd look at your past, you know, because I don't see how my camera guy Yeah. He was always behind. Right. <laughs> So the day that you guys were out there, did you? Was there any other loggers out there? Was there anybody else out there um, near you guys? It's a, it was a hunting season, so there were deer hunters scattered out through there. Which, you know, where they ever? You know, we never saw them working because they didn't come around. They were running chainsaws. They don't be on deer around. You know, so you sure know, they. Uh, but there were hunters though that reported to see uh, the light that you guys ended up seeing. From what I understand, um, yeah, I think they were on a, another that it went in ridges. You know, the, the terrain it was in ridges. You know, like deep valleys, and, and we were up on top of a ridge. Gotcha. Uh, and uh, I think it was Turkey Springs Road, but uh, I think the people that saw that were. I think, one, I think one of them was a actually off duty deputy sheriff, but oh wow, they uh they saw it from a different ridge, right? They could see over there and see us, you know, okay. see that light, but they didn't know what's going sure. on, you know. All right, this episode is brought to you from Patrios Insurance. If you are a business owner and you have five or more employees, Patrios has a unique program that will save you $573.60 per employee per year. You don't have to change your health insurance. Gives you way better benefits. It adds on top. It's called an overlay plan. If you're interested in learning about that, text overlay plan to 714-688-6994. And we are back with John Gallette. It's been very interesting thus far. And uh, really appreciate you taking the time to sit down uh, and talk to us. So we just finished up talking about uh, Cy Gilson. Have you uh, met with Cy since then? No. Have you talking with him? I've never seen him again. Gotcha. Oh. Okay. Gotcha. Um, See, I don't, I don't follow the UFO stories or, or right. I didn't, you know, not even this one. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. I, uh, um, of course, I believe in them and all that. It's just that I decided that that wasn't going to be my life. You know, and seeing that wasn't going to be my life. I decided that right away. That's why I got out of there. You know, because you know, I mean, oh, um, there's a couple of them that were pretty. You were saying something about you could see the emotion in the faces. Sure. Or the Ken, Kenneth especially you know, and, and yeah, Mike. And some of the still interviews, get very emotional. You know, and uh, just about every every one of us, you know, doing them interviews, almost every, except for me and Steve, they all break down. Mm. You know, and, and really, they're still really upset. Sure. So I think it was a good thing for me to just get away from it because, you know, I put some distance between that and me. And like Mike and Travis and Kenny it for a while, maybe Steve some too, they did those um, seminars and, you know, uh, they went out and actually worked a story. You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, but I didn't. You know, Steve really didn't a lot. You know, so uh, I think uh, by getting you know getting away from it was a good thing for me. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I don't mind I talking about it now. You know, uh, I got offered that regressive hypnosis. And uh, oh well, hell no! Yeah. You know, it took it took a long time to get over this. Sure. Uh, you know, and um, how long did it take you to get over the, the incident? Oh, uh, <laughs> it it wasn't really that long. It was. <laughs> I like I said I I got away and hid out and didn't tell anybody about it. So. Who changed their name? One of you had changed their name or went by their middle name for a while because of the incident. Steve. It was Steve. Well, yeah, his name's actually Jeff, I think. Gotcha. Jeff Burks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, what, oh, well, you know, like, uh, one of the things that really irritates me nowadays about uh, you know, uh, is like younger people, like I said, they weren't even born yet, but they're trying, you know, like say, you know, you're a good target. If you can debunk this story, then you made a name for yourself. Sure. You know, so, and they'll do that, you know. Uh, you know, like I said about that, uh, that tower. Right. That uh, Gentry Tower. This, this is the craziest theory I ever heard, you know, about how it could have happened. They, some people were claiming, well, you went the other way and you went down to that gentry tower and what you saw was a gentry tower. Well, this thing's what, like 30 feet off the ground? Mm -hmm. The point of a lookout tower is to be able to. to yeah, they're high. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you had a 30 foot high tower. Sure. The only thing you're going to see is the trees right next to you. Right. You got to be above them and look out, you know. So, and also, I don't believe there was power. They had electric out to those lookout towers at that time. Right. You know, and uh, so, you know, and, but, and to hear somebody say, you know, like uh, this one from Australia said that Steve said it was a hoax, you know, and uh, uh, I can't believe that, you know, there's no way, Steve wouldn't do that, you know, and, but when he was very young, and right after this happened, he had, he had a new family, you know, you know and uh, he was struggling hard, man, you know, really hard up for money, and that guy came and offered him $10,000 to say it was a hoax. 
there were ten thousand dollars a lot of money then philip class yeah philip class and then uh and steve really needed the money but he didn't he, he stayed with the truth you know he didn't uh you know he didn't lie sure you know so uh you know i i can't believe that she would say something like that you know said so they'll they'll take things you say out of context mm -hmm. and they'll, then they'll turn them around you know later on you and and try to screw you up with it you know and say well you know this happened several times already right you know, I'm not just you got to watch who you talk to sure you know, you know like I said we talked for a few years mm -hmm. I ever did this you know and uh, you got to know who you're dealing with you know? yeah a lot of unsavory people out there for sure. Oh man, yeah. Like I said, it's, it would, you know, somebody like that would make a name for itself by debunking, right? You know, a story like this, you know. So, right, it's for sure. Totally insane what they say, you know. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we, we'd worked all day long, man. It was hard work. And we're a pretty rough bunch, man. And, uh, if Mike would have came out of that road and made a right instead of a left, would have noticed, you know, sure. and would have raised hell. <laughs> be ready to but, get home. You know, I mean, we're wanting to get home, cleaned up, go out and party, you know. And sure. Young guys, you know. So, you know, I don't know why. Why people do it. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't understand it. Right. Um, so we've got this mountain of evidence. We've got eyewitness testimony. You guys passed the polygraphs. Travis did the regressive hypnosis and uh, tested clean. There were no drugs. You've got the, you know, 50 years of testimony, which is huge. And nobody's deviated substantially from that. Um, I think one of the most powerful things is that they went out there, and maybe it was 10 or 15 years ago, and you'll probably know about this. They were looking for evidence, and they found the tree rings that uh, were in the circumference of the UFO have grown 36 times faster than the surrounding trees, well, which is absolutely crazy. Well, what they don't tell you, though, is that was the whole point of going out there and doing what we were doing. You know, uh, because, like I said, a 40-year-old tree... And it's that big around. Right. And you cut all the ones down around it, it's going to just take off like a weed, you know. And uh, But one thing about those tree rings is that I, toward the center where that slash pile was, where that thing was sitting. Right. They had grown more out Towards that. that. Yeah. 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 You can uh, see pictures of it, too. There's a swelling, a thickening towards where the spaceship was, yeah. which is really interesting. Yeah. And and they did a study in 1997 with Chernobyl, and they found that the trees there were growing like three times faster than the trees outside of remember, that radiation, reading that. which is really, really interesting on that side. Now, I know there's been a lot of criticism. We kind of just talked about that a little bit. Um, one, they said that you were drunk or on drugs, and... You know, obviously, felling trees myself, you're not going to be drunk or high and be felling trees. No. That's you, lunacy. You go fast. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, the thickets themselves, you know, like I say, you got, they call it like a doll here thicket. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, they're right against each other. You got to try to get in there and cut that. Well, those, those uh, they're going to bend and stuff. You start cutting them, you start getting some weight, and it'll push on the bottom where you're cutting that with the with the chain. The tree will actually push that, and it'll push it into you. You know, you have to. You got to be careful. Oh, you got to be real careful. Sure, be real careful. You know, God. Uh, when I first started, I I made me a a leg guard out of a conveyor belt. Oh, nice. I was dropping it, went on my belt, yeah. you know, and tied around it. And, man, there was, I still got a couple of little scars oh, where it went all the way through that. You know? Wow. That's so powerful. It's dangerous stuff. 
You know, so you couldn't be high, you couldn't be drunk. Sure. You know. So the other big theory then is that it was a hoax. And uh, I know it's been put forth. And Philip J. Class, who uh, is the the person that really tried to debunk this for years oh, yeah. for, for, you, for you guys. He's kind of the That's bad. That's what he did for a living. Yeah, he's the bad, the bad guy in the, in the situation. Now, I know in uh, October... No, sorry, November. No, no, no. October twentieth, nineteen seventy-five. There was an NBC special, which you've probably heard about, about the the Barney and Betty Hill abduction. Oh yeah. Narrated by James Earl Jones, the 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 one and only who played Darth Vader, and many other characters. Um, did you see that? Did you I, did you watch it on TV when it when it happened? No, okay. uh, I had no idea that it ever happened until that it aired. So long after that, D- did uh, and then I, I don't I I watched um I watched the show on it on oh, a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. It's the first time I've ever seen the, anything on that because critics say that Mike especially and maybe his brother. Uh, and Travis hatched this plan. They saw this this happen a few months earlier. This made for TV special, <laughs> and that they came up with this. And I know Philip Class's big criticism was Mike was behind on the logging contract, and he was trying to get out of it. He was always behind. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and it, it's interesting. The timing of that uh, is interesting. But at that time, there's a lot of conversations and there's a lot of sightings i mean substantially in the 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 40s 50s 60s and 70s there's a lot and my theory there is that we started doing nuclear testing and bombs yeah i think that's why we we started to get more uh alien interactions and encounters because they're checking us out now that we became nuclear um but that area and my my wife had a question about this uh that you guys were at turkey springs um it was a Native American uh, area, very, very heavily Native American. It, it did was. You, you guys ever hear anything historically about sightings or any interactions with with aliens not, outside of that? Not with, uh, you know, are you talking about like with stories about Native sure. Americans? Sure. Yeah. Uh, now I, I knew lots of Native Americans. I never heard one of them ever mention anything about. About any of those experiences, yeah, any of that kind of stuff. You know. H- had you heard before the incident anybody in Snowflake or Heber community seeing sightings of these things? Um, because I know Mike has mentioned that he had incidents, uh, or no, sorry, Travis, that he had seen other things beforehand. What's your take on all that? Uh, I believe Mike's getting seen now. Okay. You know, I don't think he's uh what about seen those things. He, what about Travis? Travis? Yeah. Oh no, he's so sharp. You, you, know. you think Travis saw those things? Because Travis has said he's uh, experienced outside. Did Travis ever talk about no. seeing any with you guys, ever seeing anything when you were driving or when uh, you guys were having a beer? Well, you know, I see I drove a truck all over the United States and, and uh I seen a lot of strange things but i don't know what they were i can't say they were this or that you know and oh man you know like one night at a rest area the whole bunch of trucks there and and uh there's these real bright lights you know up you know up above us and uh everybody got out and looked at it but you know, nobody knew what it was you know right and, you know we talked about it a little bit but you know, I couldn't say it was a UFO or, you know, and, you know, I've seen, I've seen some, you know, strange things. Sure. You know, but like I said, I can't definitely say it wasn't like that. It wasn't right there. Right. You know, and, uh, Did Travis or any of the other guys before the incident ever talk about UFOs or aliens? I don't recall them ever talking about it. Mm-hmm. I don't, you know, like I said, they, Mike and Travis pretty much have their own conversations up sure. front, you know. The rest of us, you know, talking crap about Mike and Travis probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You know, but, I, I, I find it significant that the forestry 
service actually wrote an affidavit to Mike stating that in no way would he had benefited from the hoax if it was a hoax. And in fact, it would only harm Mike and the contract and you guys. Yeah. Uh, so you, like I say, you got paid by the acre. You had to cut so many acres in order to get paid. So the acreage that we had cut up to that point, you know, since the last time we got paid up until that point, he lost all that money he had to pay us. Wow. Because, you know, he didn't make anything for it. Sure. He defaulted on the contract. You lose out. You right. Know? And yeah, he, you know, I know even then, those people up there, you know, that did that kind of work, they would bid all the time. Sure. And they'd go on, and almost all of them defaulted. It's pretty times. common. Pretty yeah, common. Pretty common, mm. you know, to default. On it. it doesn't. It doesn't keep you from being able to do it again, you know, and because uh, it's a government contract, it's the lowest bidder, you know. Right. So you know, it. Uh, so you know, it wouldn't have been a big deal to begin with, even if you, you know. Except for him losing the money, having to pay us our wages. Sure. That was a, that was a job in itself, was getting my money out That's of That's right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I find it inter interesting. Chuck Ellis, Sheriff Chuck Ellison said that Class introduced himself as he was from the government. So there's a lot of speculation now that Class was actually a CIA operative uh, sent to discredit you guys and the story and well, the situation. I thought that was common knowledge that he was a government agent. Oh, really? Wow. That's fascinating. Well, and the fact that he offered Steve, you know, as a struggling young man, $10,000. We offered, it's, he would offer anybody $10,000. Is that right? That was his thing? That was his thing. His thing well, was. For, never offered me. Yeah. <laughs> I never well, heard. Never his, heard his, according to his, his bio, it's on Wikipedia. <coughs> he had in 1966 class made an offer. It stood for the remaining 39 years of his life. By 1974, he said, if you can prove the following things, I'll give you $10,000 or something like that. And he's got an A, B, and a C. But this is to actually prove that, mm. that aliens existed. I know. It's, in, so it's impossible. That was, a, that was a standing offer that he had all the way up until his, his death. Wow. And that was a famous part of his uh, debunking, according to his bio here. Interesting. He also contacted Cy, the polygrapher, and um, uh, class did? yeah. And Cy said, um, "Yeah, I'm interested to answer your question. Send me an email or a letter, and I'll I'll write you back." And I guess he never sent anything to Cy. Yeah, because Cy, you know, as a as a polygrapher, he's only interested in the truth, and like he said, he's very good at what he does, and so it did not go with what class was trying to you yeah. know do and discredit you guys which is very interesting um i gotta ask you about mike keston because a few years ago about what about mike and a few years ago mike um mike keston yeah mike is that not his last name no mike rogers, mike rogers. that must yeah. be his middle name keston's his son oh okay Maybe Michael it's Howard Rogers is, is, is Howard. Okay. Yeah. Well, he uh, he was on Facebook as Mike Heston Rogers for a while. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember. Yeah. He he came out and said, uh, "I, Michael H. Rogers, uh, being of sound and rational mind, do hereby give notice that I am no longer to be considered a witness to Travis C. Walton's supposed abduction on November fifth, nineteen seventy five." And this is this is a post that he posted on on Facebook, October 18, 2021. He said, this is just a reminder for all those who still insist that we six observed the abduction of Travis Walton on November 5th, 1975. Well, we didn't. And I'm getting very tired of having to say this. Travis Walton is totally alone with his claim of the abduction. Now, he's obviously referring to Travis's abduction because you did not see an abduction. So he's not denying uh what what you witnessed but he seems pretty upset there's obviously some turmoil there with mike i know mike's recanted that since so what what's the deal with mike have you talked to him i have since then the last or? time i talked to mike he had his own podcast going on right and uh so he asked me to go on it so i went on it 
but he never got to talk. You know, he would <laughs> he would talk the whole time, and then you know, like he'd take a break, and the, his producer would say, "Hey, you know, uh, you need to get back to the story." You <laughs> know, so, and Micah totally off the wall some stuff, man. Like the Phoenix Lights, you've heard of those, right? Sure. Okay, so uh, those are what like a mile across. Mm-hmm. Um, Mike got to where he'd say, in my mind's eye, I see this, which basically means he made it up. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, like he said, that was a weather balloon, the Phoenix Lights, a mile-wide weather balloon. Right. And, oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and then he, all he said he was, he went down to Mexico with a, uh, Don Gonzalez, his old friend. Oh, yeah, up there, yeah. And uh, said they saw a UFO or a crash or something like that. And uh, Don Gonzalez said, I ain't never been to Mexico. <laughs> oh, well, that's funny. <laughs> Mike, uh, Mike's dad was the same way. I worked for his dad after that. I went out in the woods and then again, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... Uh, Anyway, uh, he started getting, you know, losing losing his mental capacity. Uh, I believe that's where Mike's at. You know, gotcha. Not a bad guy. You know, he sure. was family. I love him forever. But right. You know, he's just, and he he's obviously got some uh, knowing a little bit of the situation and being friend Facebook friends. Then I know he's got a new account. He's got some beef with Travis, and, oh, yeah. and that's that's probably due from you know, money and the movie and that, that yeah, kind of stuff. And, and um, I think with Mike and Steve, it's uh, jealousy too. Because mm. they, they think they should have had a, a more important role or... or In the movie? No, you know... Just in, in just general. And everything. Yeah. Everything about it. You know, well, Steve is even telling me about a lawyer that we could sue Travis for some of Well, Travis didn't get rich. Travis... Sure. He worked for a living, right? You know? He, he did these continue things. Continue to keep logging, right? Yeah, he no. Well, he went to work at the paper mill outside. That was a that was the job in the area when everybody wanted paper mill. Yeah, he went mm. to work out the paper mill, and then uh, so you know he worked for a living. He didn't uh, didn't make a whole bunch of money off of this, you know. And right. people say, oh, he made millions. Of, you know, I. I seen his house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He did not make millions. Sure, and that's a testament to the story, huh? Yeah, that's a that's a testament to the story. If this was fabricated, and you guys created a hoax, there would have to be some equal sharing. And yeah, of, Rogers of would have had to have helped profits. in the hoax. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, if, I, if that was a hoax, I would be wanting. Sure. You know, your some money. Money for it. Right. I've probably made five grand off of this. Sure. In 50 years, it's not very good money. Right. <laughs> totally. Telling the truth, and, telling and, the truth is and not And by good the money. way, uh, he, the only thing that uh, that John and Susan, his wife, got out of this was a meal last night. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, <laughs> That's about it. You know? Right. Right. I've uh, got to meet some good people and uh, do some interesting, you know, go to some interesting places. And those, sure. Some of those seminars were fun, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've got some uh, questions from my kids. I've got seven kids, so this may be another hour and a half. Just let me you know. I'm just <laughs> my my daughter Karis, um, she's uh, she's um, in college. She's 19 years old, and she asks, "Has the government ever contacted you or tried to contact you about any of this? Have they ever interviewed you or?" No. Nope. Asked you any questions? No, there was. Uh, oh, I ran uh, the maintenance department at a Walmart in Cholo, Arizona. That was years after that happened, and there was some guy that used. Uh, they were doing a remodel on the store, and this guy, he just showed up, and strange looking guy, man, he. Strange skin tone, hmm. eyes, all that, you know. But he uh, he uh, claimed he used to work for the CIA. Huh. 
you know, but he would sit and talk to me for hours. Right. You know, I was the boss. I could sit there for hours. And, you know, yeah. And he was the boss. He could sit there, you know, according to him, what he did. But he would tell me some amazing stuff, you know, that I think I learned more from him than he ever learned from me, you know. And, and if any of it was true, you know. Right. I don't know, you know, if it was true or not. But sure. Many nights, man, we sat all night and just told me some outlandish stuff about UFOs. And they knew who I was. They knew everything about me, you know. And, hmm. uh, That's interesting. Yeah, I don't know how, you know, but he did. That's very interesting. But that's the only person I can think of I've talked to that may have been government, you know. Right. My son, Van, he's um, 13 years old. He asked, do you still have any dreams about the incident or nightmares? No. Nothing? Not at all. I never have. Wow. Interesting. So it's not like, I mean, at the very beginning you said... It's one of the, you wish it never happened, but you're glad it did, right? Is that kind of what you said? Yeah. Uh -huh. But you never, it never haunted you up into this? I, uh, no, not really. Okay. I, uh, I said, man, um, I had old Dwayne Smith's station wagon one night, right after this happened. I, me and this girl were parked on a back road right outside of town. Close your ears, Susan. Huh? <laughs> anyway, earmuffs, you know, earmuffs. So <laughs> we're in the back, you know, we're, we're bare ass naked. All of a sudden, the, the, the station wagon starts bouncing up and down, you know, and somebody was out there doing it. Not somebody. You know, on the bumper or something. Yeah. You know. But that's what I decided. I'm getting the hell out of here. I ain't never coming back. <laughs> yeah. So. My wife, Crick, she wants to know, have you ever had any other experiences outside of this besides what you've seen? Any? Uh, any of uh, the UFO experiences? Sure. No. Uh, not that I can honestly say that's what it was. Nothing significant I've seen, like this. I've seen some strange lights and, and you know, they maneuver strangely and things like that, but... I don't know what they were. You know? Sure. And they never were close like that was. So, you know, uh, I'm quite sure. Over yeah. In, I was on Highway 666. <laughs> and, uh, Scary. You know, uh, going through New Mexico. I think it's 191 now. But uh, uh, I remember seeing a light out the, out the driver's side window, the side window. Mm. So I rolled the window down, and I took a picture of it, you know, and then uh, I put it on Facebook. So everybody's telling me, you know, oh, that's a reflection of your flash off your, sure. you know, everybody had a, a right. you know, well, I know it wasn't none Explanation. of Explanation. But, you know, the window was down. Uh, what's it reflecting off of? Right. You know, so, you know. It, uh, my wife also asked, um, have you guys had any shared health problems between the, the guys? Anything in common from potentially like radiation from from the spacecraft or anything um, like that? Not that I'm aware of. I don't know. Kenny got skin cancer on his arm. Uh, that's the only, only one I know that, you know, the cut I could even think would be a medical problem related to that. Gotcha. Uh, you know, I was thinking, I wonder from the aliens' perspective, one, well, if they are aliens, what, what, did, what, did, what did they, what were they doing there? And, you know, from their perspective, were they taking a, a pit stop? Some, some one of the aliens had to go pee or something like that, so they, they made a little pit stop, or maybe it was like a human safari, and they were checking you guys out, and <laughs> they had some alien know, kids there, and it was kind of like a one of those safari-type things where you you're know, in the... It, it doesn't... I, I never understand it either, because why... I mean, they're, they're so advanced, and now, why they even got to mess with us? They can just look at us and see the whole story. Yeah. You know? Or take one person and know everything. Right. You know, and uh, so why, you know, I, I never understood why they 
or what they would want. Right. You know, what could they possibly, you know, now Travis, I believe he got up there too close. And I think, no, they didn't intend to take Travis. They didn't intend to harm him. But he got up there into their force, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. uh, their propulsion or whatever, or whatever. Because it started to uh, kind of wobble and rumble before that light hit him. Mm. And then uh, and I always thought, well, man, they, they messed him up. They picked him up, fixed him up. And I thought that because it was like a happy ending. Yeah. To a terrible story, you know. Sure. So I always, remember yeah. the urine the urine analysis too when he came back. The urine, they took a urine analysis <clears throat> of Travis and he had no ketones in his urine, which mm. if you have ketones in your urine, that means that you've been out all by yourself and you haven't eaten anything or drank anything. And so your body is eating itself. But oh yeah. You didn't have any of that, which would suggest that you had some type keep, of sustenance. They were keeping him alive. Yeah, right. I remember Reading that or hearing that just the other day, it was the first time I just I, read I that a couple that. minutes ago. I said I didn't. Uh, I've never researched our story, yeah, you know, or or looked up. I mean, I was there. Well, you lived you know. it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> you know. According to you, you lived it. I, is is there any details that you and the crew have purposely not told that you guys are taking to your grave from the incident? No, no, no. It was, it was nothing, you know, that, uh, I mean, you know, that was weird. Or oh, you thinking, you know, uh, I don't think, you know, there's nothing to do with that UFO. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the little squabbles I had between ourselves and stuff, I said it was all not related to that UFO at all. That was personal. Sure. Uh, little things, you know, like me and Mike, he said something about my sister, uh, me and Steve, because he got drunk at my wedding. <laughs> 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 but it's got nothing to do with, you know, sure. the UFOs. Yeah. Did you guys work together as a logging crew after this event, or did that split you guys up? No, that was it. Uh, that was I didn't it. work with any of them again. I said I worked for... I went back up there years after that. I worked uh, for a little while with uh, Mike's father, Lyle Rogers. Mm. You know, and, uh, the character. That <laughs> like, was a fun old guy to work for. Uh, not like Mike at all. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So what are you, closing out, what do you want people to know that are listening to this? I mean, there are organizations that you can contact and say something like this happens to you and you don't want to put up with the harassment, you don't want to put up with the accusations and all that. There's organizations, I know there's one here in San Antonio, I sat a little bit through a seminar they had, Mm. but you can talk to them and it's unbiased, you know, they're not going to try to persuade you this way or that way. They'll listen to your story. They'll sympathize with you and stuff. But they, you know, it's somebody to talk to and get that off your chest if you don't want public knowledge of it, you know. And most people probably wouldn't. Sure. So I think don't let it be your life. Right. Just because it happened, you know, it's, it ain't going to happen every day, you know. Sure. You really can't, you know, go on with your life and, you know, hell, live it, enjoy it. You know, and, and uh, you know, it's, uh, I said, I think that those organizations are, that you can contact are, mm. are a great way to go for somebody. Like I said, I used to, so I used to go to them seminars and people would come up and tell you their story afterwards you know and uh some of them man to break your heart you know mm-hmm. and, you, and you can look be some scared young woman you know and just terrified of what happened to her but she doesn't want to tell anybody you know? right but they'll come to you 
because you know you're experienced you know i don't know you know you're not really you know i mean the same as same as a car crash or something you didn't ask for it you know it just right. happened yeah you know? and uh, you know, go out looking for it or, or in any way make it happen you know? mm. so you know just so just live live your life talk to somebody about it if you don't want it public, go to one of them organizations and talk to them about it. It'll help you a lot, you know, to get it off your chest, get it, you know. I, I found that most of my problems in my life, all I needed was somebody mm. to listen, you know, and uh, I didn't need answers. I didn't need solutions. If they would just listen as I was saying it, the solutions and answers would come in my mind, you know, as right. you're saying it, you know, and it gives you some peace of mind being able to talk to somebody about sure. a traumatic situation like that. Totally. You know, I think people should. Mm. You know, anybody who's ever experienced anything should talk to somebody about it. Right. You know, I say you don't have to go public. It's, that could be a real disaster yeah. <laughs> at well, times, you know. That's for you guys in a lot yeah. of ways. It was sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. okay. I never told a soul for a long, long time, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I didn't want anybody knowing. I was, I didn't want to be called a liar, you know. But man, you know, it's, you know, you want, you want to get me pissed. <laughs> call me a liar sure. <laughs> you know yeah. I got nothing to lie about mm. you know and like I said it's real simple you know just tell the truth tell the truth from the very beginning you never have to change the story you never have to elaborate you never you know you don't have to try to remember you know well, you know just tell the tell the truth and it, it's it's easy after that you know what I mean? Totally. You know, coming and doing a podcast or going to those seminars. You know, I thought, I get scared. I get, I'm nervous right now. You know, and I, I get that way whenever I do something like this. You know, I guess it's natural. Sure. But, uh, you know, I've gotten in front of a crowd of 2,000 people and stood and told that story. And, wow. And, uh, you know, it's real simple if you just tell the truth. Yeah, so. Love it. So talk to somebody and tell the truth. You know, people don't believe it, they don't fuck the heck with them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, we appreciate you being on. Thank you for being on our first podcast. Oh, man. I got good luck to you. All. Yeah. I'll, I'll wait. Things go great for you. You know, we, we really appreciate it. And um, thank you for Patreos for sponsoring this podcast and we are flannel mouth and sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. Hmm. Ah. That's a wrap. Okay. Okay.